Hey, everybody. <laughs> Welcome. We're having discussions about Buffalo and Pody Goaties. This is Respawn Aim Fire, Kick Ass Revenue Gaming Podcast. And today we are determining a top 10 list for game of the year, potential game of the year, some would call it. Pody Goaties is the shorthand version of that. Today we've got some cool guests and uh, chats here as well. But first, <laughs> I'm saying you're not a cool guest. Uh, first up, we have from shared screens and the internet in general, Alec Bobko. Hello. Yay. Tell everybody about yourself, Alec. What do you do? What's going on? Yeah, so I'm one of the uh, co-founders and a, a main editor over at Shared Screens. Uh, we're a podcasting, I guess, network, essentially, where we have a bunch of podcasts. We have uh, Shared Screens Media Club, where we talk about all uh, games, movies, TV shows, but not books. Uh, we have the Shared Screens podcast, just kind of our BS and getting to hang around and chat with each other. And then a couple of new shows we have. Uh, a Pokemon podcast called Shared Screens Elite Four and the Pip Boys podcast. It's all about Fallout. We're ranking the vaults and how messed up they are. Nice. That's very, awesome. very cool. Interesting. Next up, we have up. I'll let you give your guys his own plugs from this point. Uh, Chris, Chris Waterman. Hey, buddy, what's up? Not too much, man. Thanks for having me. I am co-founder, editor and co-host of Screen Quest, which is a movie podcast where we essentially uh, take the burden of picking your next movie by creating a deck of cards, drawing, that generates our film and topic week to week. So very, very wide range. I think our oldest film so far is 1927 and newest would be 2022. So all different genres and topics, but uh, it's good to be here, man. Very, very good. Next up, never been on the podcast before, I don't believe. My buddy George. What's going on, George? What up, what up? Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, I am currently not doing anything, so I don't have anything to plug. I'm just, I just play video games. So I think I'm in the minority of somebody's in their 30s, not actively on a podcast right now. So, You're the only one. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I don't have anything to plug, but uh, I was, you know, we, when we were uh, a lot more active, part of the East Coast Games podcast, which was a lot of fun, which is where I got to know Adam and, well, Chris a little bit. <laughs> Never met in person, it. right? No. <laughs> <laughs> all right next up we have the regular yokels we're going to start with the man running the whole show thank you for doing all the legwork because i cannot fathom doing it myself uh alex Gozina. hey hey everybody i gotta say i'm really looking forward to showing you everything that this show tonight has to offer because i put a lot of work into it I also put a lot of work into a lot of other things that have been happening uh, in my life in real life. I actually, at my uh, company's Christmas party, put on a live Jeopardy show that reused uh, a lot of the kind of skills and uh, media that I'd created for a lot of the stuff that we've done on Respawning Fire. It turned out incredibly well. It was a smash hit at the party, but I am doggone tired right now. And so I'm excited to do this, and I am also incredibly excited to get it over with. There we go. Very nice. And then last and very least, we have, I'm sorry, Chad, I'm being mean to you for no reason. We have Chad Michael Ennis. Bison and buffalo are two separate species. Buffalo <laughs> exists in Africa and um, Asia. Bison exists in North America and Europe. Bison started oh, with 30 yeah. to 60 million in the early 1800s. And then as we drove west, we murdered them in droves. All the way down to, hold on, hold on, hold on. I have this up. Oh, damn it. Hold on. Uh, in 1884, there were 325 wild bison left. Wow. 24 of those <laughs> were in Yellowstone. In 2017, <laughs> there were 500,000 bison in the U.S., including 5,000 in Yellowstone. So we are, they have gone th from nearly extinct to near threatened. I'm very proud of us as a nation. Very we good. almost had them. As an American nation. Yeah, we're real freedom reigns. Uh, thank you. That is everybody here today. Thank you guys for coming on. So again, Pody Goaties, potential game of the years. The idea is, uh, I'll pull up my thing that I sent everybody. So what we're doing is everybody here is going to bring a nomination for a game. It's also just about loving a game, right? You bring something. Hey, this is what it is. Here's my pitch for why this game is great. If anybody else agrees and concurs, say your piece after that person gets done. And then we're going to put them all down on a list. And at the end of everyone giving nominations, we determine 
a top 10, not ranking them or anything. We're just putting 10 games that we think deserve to be potential game of the years. After that point, we had to determine two of them that get first round buys because we are going to have a bracket tournament that'll come next week as a full video whenever the regular raft crew decides. But talk about games we like, reiterate it, make a top 10, and then two first round buys. Uh, for um, the athletically disinclined, what does a first round buy mean? That just means because a bracket needs has two teams matching up. So if you have 10 uh -huh. teams, that's a, an odd number of teams to go head to head. You got an easier way of explaining it. You automatically qualify for the second round. Yes. Well, technically, you automatically yeah, okay. qualify yeah, for okay. the finals. Well, the semifinals. Cool. Semifinals, excuse me. So, yeah, uh, that's what we're doing. And does anybody specific want to start? And again, there's no wrong answers. We can talk about whatever you want. And then we will, at the end, we will cut down our list. But whoever wants to go, ugh, feel free. <laughs> <laughs> I'm drinking bourbon. That's why we talked about Buffalo Trace. Um, Actually, Alec, give us yeah. something first. Because they're so specifically, you mm -hmm. don't have to do this one, but I talked to Alec. I'm like, hey, there's a game that we have not played, but I know you have played and really, really like. So I want your pitch to be okay. so good yeah. that whenever we go onto the tournament, if it gets in, we can't just be like, well, we didn't play. It was like, no, we can listen to what Alec said and judge it determined on, on the things. Pressure. That yeah. to do. Okay. A lot of pressure. Yeah. So, so that game was one Street Fighter Six. A uh, game that, I, you know, normally I'm not much of a fighting genre person. Um, most of I've played is like the NetherRealm games for their story mode and then usually play through that and just dip out. But Street Fighter VI has done something that has revolutionized fighting games. And what I said during our review is that it sets a new standard for fighting games where it has what they call a modern control scheme, which essentially makes it like Smash Bros controls. Um, so it's really simplified for, uh, you know, beginners like myself and they even have, uh, character tutorials to teach you the itty, like nitty gritty parts of those characters. And they have one for every single character, even the new DLC fighters that are being announced. Um, and what's really cool is that they have what they call combo trials. So every character has, uh, they basically in their training room, they go through like step by step uh, how to play that character. And even in the middle of those tutorials, you can like literally stop the tutorial and like do that combo for yourself and like essentially play along with the tutorial. Of, and it tells you exactly how to play that character. And as somebody that's never really gotten into the fighting game genre, like I actually felt strong enough with the skills that I had that I actually went into online ranked mode. Oh, and I've that's... put over 50 hours into this game. It was my most played game on Steam this year. How did online ranked mode go, though? Not great. <laughs> I, I didn't get out of <laughs> so Left that part out. So. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. But it's it's... Like, I held my own against uh, some guys that I played with, uh, some of the other Shared Screens uh, hosts. And they've even told me, like, they've seen an improvement in my skills. Like, so it's something that modern controls, if, if uh, you, you're supposed to, or in theory, uh, you're supposed to, you know, use the modern controls, use the tutorials and, like, the character guides, combo trials to, like, get a hold, like, get kind of your foundation set. And then eventually when you're feeling... Um, set with those, you can graduate to the uh, classic control scheme. Because the other thing that's uh, with modern controls, your attacks do do a little less damage and you don't have access to the full character's, like, moveset. So, like, one of the characters, uh, Chun-Li, she has, like, a couple different modes that you can play as her, but in modern control scheme, you don't have access to those. Um, you do, you actually can do the actual classic uh, mode controls in modern the modern control scheme so you technically do but it's they don't actually like list them um but it's just the most accessible fighting game that's come out this year i think it speaks volumes that like it, you know even though online like ranked didn't go well for you that the game mm -hmm. was able to bolster your confidence to the point where like mm -hmm. you felt like you wanted to give it a try like that's really really cool and pretty impressive that there must be some kind of feedback loop, right? Where it's making you feel like you are progressing and getting oh, yeah. adept. And I think that's really, really cool. 
And one thing I did leave out is there's this mode they call the battle hub, which is essentially like just an online mode where you can run around with your avatar in an arcade and challenge and fight other people online. <laughs> That's awesome. It's really cool. People do make like some abominations quarter down. with their basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then like, it'll play like you have a bunch of choices between the different servers. And if you have a good enough streak, it'll like play it like, Oh, this person's on a 20 game win streak. And it will like show you. And then you can actually, uh, hit a button and you can actually go and challenge them yourself. That's cool. So it, it's again, like just the most accessible fighter and it's set a new standard. Like that's part of the reason why I didn't even, or wasn't even interested in Mortal Kombat one because it, you know, everything street fighter six did this year. Like it made Mortal Kombat one just seem not as appealing. Yeah. I mean, then charging $20 for fatality is also not helping. Their yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I, I'm not a fighting game person at all, but I think what speaks volumes is the way that Street Fighter VI has pushed these characters and this property into the mainstream in such a way that Chun Li was the most searched for video game character on Pornhub this year. Um, specifically, though, the Chun Li from Fortnite, because Chun Li is now in Fortnite, not necessarily Chun Li from uh, Street right. Fighter. So, I mean, that's did you see her in Fortnite though. She's just a little thick. I have not seen her in Fortnite now. But I could on Pornhub. It that exists. People are searching for it. <laughs> very nice. All right, Alex, you want to put it on the list then? I don't yes, know. Yes, I yeah. think that we should put it on the list. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, Ooh look at that little dissolve. Also, I'm not going to let this go unnoticed. The, the freaking B roll and the Gaussian blur for everything else behind. Oh, very impressive. Very, very aroused. Good. Thank you should go to Pornhub later and Google cozy. <laughs> and, and there are still there are still surprises yet to come. Very nice. We'll, we'll have to wade further into sh into the show to find them. All right. Uh, anyone want to volunteer for next? Or I'll pick you, kids. Like I'm a teacher. I'll I'll go. I don't know. All right. Well, uh, I wanted to make my first nominee the the one game that I thought got absolutely snubbed from the Game Awards, and that is fucking Hogwarts Legacy. Um, if you mm. haven't played this fucking game, you are absolutely missing out. I am not a Harry Potter person at all. Like, I watched the movies growing up as a kid, but I didn't read the books. I wasn't super into the lore. But I was excited enough about the game coming out that I was like, oh, I'm, I'm going to play this. This looks like it could be cool. Because if I don't know if any of you guys played the, like the GameCube games back in the day for Harry Potter. They were actually pretty good, pretty underrated. Um, so I was kind of looking forward to this. And honestly, this game is amazing. I, I can't believe that it didn't get nominated for, for anything, if I'm not mistaken, or just about anything. But I, I thought it should have been in the running for Game of the Year um in, in a, probably in several different categories in my opinion but me personally it was a fresh story i think it's like several i think it's what 100 150 years before the events of the movies or something like that um and honestly just everything that you could do in the game the only thing that's really the only knock on it is that you couldn't play quidditch um however to no surprise i believe they're coming out with a quidditch uh free to play game or whatever um but it is explained really well as to why you can't play it. And honestly, without that, the game is so satisfying regardless that, you know, by the end of it, I, I didn't I didn't care and I didn't mind. Um, you know, flying on the broomsticks, is, it's it's amazing. It, it works really, really well. The combat is 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 excellent. I was very uh, nervous about how that would be because, I mean, it's just a wand, you know. Um, but they, they make it really, really dynamic where it feels like you're playing, you know, a high level RPG. Um, it's, it's simplified where it needs to be. The side quests are tasteful. Um, there's not a lot of, uh, fluff. Um, but man, the game is just very, very true to the lore, which I myself don't know a ton of, but it was just really cool just walking through the freaking castle. Like all the, all the little secrets, there's all kinds of, uh, hidden things all over the place. Uh, it was just really neat just immersing yourself in that world again. And something that I can't imagine what it's like for someone who's a hardcore fan uh, must have been amazing. Uh, but even me, just the nostalgia from what I remembered from some of those movies um, was 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 really awesome. I, I, I think this I think this game, I think what hurt it is when it came out at the beginning of the year. Right. Uh, I think people just kind of forgot that or the con the obviously the, the the controversy or the elephant in the room with everything that's going on with, uh, even though, uh, from my understanding, uh, she didn't have any involvement in the game, but 
Um, I think that might, the combination of those two things probably hurt it in terms of uh, critical reception or recognition. But honestly, I thought that was a, a fantastic game, and it's easily in my top five for the year. Still best-selling game of the year, by the way. Just a heads up. Yeah, know, yeah it is and wild. Else. It's crazy. Yeah. Brought a lot of casual non-gamers into it, too. Yeah. It's consistently on the top 10 of the NPD every single month still. It's wild. It's excellent. If you haven't played it, man, I, I highly recommend it. You don't have to know or care anything about Harry Potter because I'm very I'm casual Harry Potter at best, and I loved it. That's cool to hear because I've been I think it's on sale right now for like fifty percent off. So I'm, I'm, I'm worth it, man. Worth it. Probably it still is on my list on to Switch, play. Though. Just came out. <laughs> yeah, where it <laughs> looks great. It, it looks it's fantastic. Like, Are you kidding me? <laughs> no, that's squint, a perfect. I'm so tell. glad you brought that up because that's like a. I have my PlayStation Portal, and that's how I'm playing everything for the net for while I'm on vacation. And so that's like the perfect. I have to finish this game because I, I never finished it when it came out. I still have. I don't know, maybe a third of it left. And that's just a great excuse for me to sit down on Christmas morning and just play that. Beat it. <laughs> Very good. Go on, Cozy. I was swallowing just like <laughs> so much bourbon there. Go ahead and throw it on the list, bud. All righty. It's on the list. All right. Very cool. Uh, Chris, you can go ahead and go next. Hmm. So I'm debating what I want to. We're going to come back around eventually. Oh, right? yeah, we're gonna. Everyone's going to be yeah, able yeah. to get their things out. Everybody. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um. Okay. Just in case it doesn't get mentioned, uh, I, I have to throw a shout out to Armor Core Six: The Fires of Rubicon. Now everyone here knows I'm a From Simp. I love my Souls like games. Uh, but I was very, very trepidatious about. I think the last I think Armor Core game that I played was maybe the original. Um, I'm not really a mech guy, so I was curious to see like how it was going to go. And um, I played the ever loving shit out of this when it came out, and uh, it had some of that from difficulty that I really liked, but also the mech fantasy was just like um, amazingly done. Um, I liked a lot of the no doubt like quality of life improvements, like being able to switch your mech load out. Like if you lose in a boss fight, you don't have to like exit the whole level. You could just go back and like try different things. Um, and it just felt really rewarding to experiment. And uh, yet you still had that satisfaction of, of beating some of the more like difficult encounters. Um, yeah, we got some footage rolling here. Just the, the connect, like there's just very few games that are as kinetic as this. Um, and like just feel um, exactly the way you would want to, to feel right like you could probably all in your mind have an idea of what would i want a mech fantasy to feel like it's it's this right here um so yeah i mean i don't have really a whole lot more to add besides that if you've not played this i would urge you to do it at some time even if you're like never been interested in playing the mech game because i think it is it's approachable i have a friend who has uh, never beaten a souls game before and just kind of got on the hype train um and he did better than me on a couple of bosses um just because like he was able to kind of find that loadout a little quicker than i was that that worked for him and just absolutely um screamed with joy you know like when he beat like the the game it was just like had that sort of like uh satisfaction factor that you would get from a, a souls game i would say it's not as hard as the majority of the souls games but it still certainly presents a, a challenge for some of the fights and i think it's the replayability is something i want to come back to because once you beat the game, you can take alternate paths, like so you get to make choices throughout the campaign, and it offers you alternate level paths or mission paths and alternate endings. Um, and I think you get to keep some of the stuff that you've unlocked, like prior when you go go back and replay it. So, yeah, good stuff. Yeah, I'm glad someone talked about it because that's a game I was like, man, I want to play this, and I just didn't find the time. Because, um, same. Yeah, I'm like, I like from software. The idea of mech sounds cool, but then yeah, everyone's like, no, it's dope. I'm like, well, shit, let me get on that one of these days. So I'm glad you talked about it because it it'd be a like great game to play channel. if things like dry up a little bit, you know, and you're kind of waiting for spring to kind of wind up like this is a great game to play. Like once you uh, kind of settle down from the things that you missed, yeah, throw it I feel into, like into that pile. I didn't have enough time this year to play all the games I wanted to play. Like I felt like oh. pretty much every month I was consistently like knee deep into some sort of game like i haven't had any downtime and yet 
still not enough time. Sounds nope. like a new game is going on the list. Ooh, look at that Ooh. fade in. <clears throat> All right, next. Cozy, I'll let you talk. I know you're running stuff. I want to get your energy up. Go get your Tim Hortons, buddy. Let's go. Oh, man, <laughs> here we go. My metaphorical Tim Hortons. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. When we did the Podigotes last year, I want to say that the maximum number of entries that we could put on this list was like 12, if I remember correctly. Like we narrowed it down to- 12 Indies and 12 AAAs, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was a little bit weird because like, yeah, we divided it up in that way. But the point is, is you could only have a maximum of 12 games on the board at any given point in time. Uh, This time around, we actually have as many as 21 spots that we could theoretically fill if we feel very passionate. Uh, about talking about a lot of games, which is why I'm bringing to the table a game that normally I wouldn't necessarily insert into a list like this, but because we got 21 spots to fill, I'm talking about the murder of Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh my God. Oh my God. We yes. don't have to fill 21 spots. because We don't have speak. to, but we can. <laughs> Let me tell you a little bit about Murder the Sonic the Hedgehog. Murder the Sonic the Hedgehog. The murder of Sonic the Hedgehog. Even I can't pronounce it correctly, but that's okay because this game really took myself and a lot of people by surprise. Um, you know, Sonic, obviously a franchise that has a very storied history. The games have been up and down. Sonic Frontiers, which released last year, was very enjoyable. It was like, I think, my 10th favorite game of the year, but it was certainly a very flawed game. Uh, there are great Sonic movies and an upcoming third movie that looks like it's going to be just as great, but you don't know if that'll be bookended by a also very bad Sonic mobile game, which will release with completely busted controls. And so it was a pleasant surprise that on April 4th, fools of this year uh sega announced hey guess what we're putting out a game in which we are finally doing the one thing that people have wanted to do for years now which is kill off sonic the hedgehog everyone laughed oh ha ha sega what a goof what a meme and people dug into this game as i did and were surprised to discover that it is a shockingly well-written game that does not overstay its welcome Uh, It basically presents this fun murder mystery of Sonic and friends are there to celebrate the birthday of Sonic's girlfriend, Amy Rose. Uh, They're all in characters doing this like weird kind of like uh, murder on the Orient Express-esque like uh, live action murder room saw trivia uh, puzzle-esque role-playing adventure. Things go awry. Uh, Bad guys show up in ways that you wouldn't expect. And the game, I think, just serves as both a really kind of great love letter to Sonic that is just incredibly kind of entertaining to play features some surprisingly like solid gameplay moments interspersed with a lot of its visual novel-y stuff and overall just left me feeling with a smile on my face this is a good time very cool I do have it installed on my PC as well and plan to play it at some point in the very near future I don't Fantastic. know how I not heard of this. This I didn't. This, yeah, that, well, this, this sounds amazing. amazing. It was like April uh, Fool's game. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's like real though. Yeah. Yeah, right now. It's very cool. Well, I mean, I guess that means it goes on the list. Cause... Yeah, I, I guess it means it has to go on the list, huh? Huh? Because I brought it up. Yes. The murder of Sonic the Hedgehog gets to go on the list. Although I will be abbreviating abbreviating it to murder the Sonic because I don't think it would fit otherwise. All right, very cool. Chad, you're up next, bud. Uh, Since we're going, we know we'll all get to the big blockbuster games that everyone expects to be on this list. But since we're, I want to make sure we continue the shouting out things that people might not have played or might not uh, know. So this game technically is an older game, but it did re-release this year. So pending your approval, it is eligible for this list. Inscription was released on Xbox for the first time. I'm just kidding. It's on Inscription. But Dead Space got a remake this year. Oh, of course. And of course this is allowed. Come on. Yeah, I, of course. Of course. I had to do the, the Inscription. Uh, Say three years game. in a row. Let's talk about Inscription on Game yeah. of the Year. Fucking Don't listen to Adam game. when he I mean, said to it's... watch when he said to play it. <laughs> Adam said to play it the year it came out. Well, let's ignore Adam. That's fine. I did play it again this year alongside Matt for the first time when he played it. Um, so, uh, no. Uh, Dead Space was, I think, if if... Resident Evil 4 is good enough for Joff Keeley, then we can absolutely throw a Dead Space into this. And I think that while I haven't played Resident Evil 4 Remake, and I do like the original a lot, 
what Dead Space did in terms of technology and and reimagining that game, like the the ray tracing and path tracing with audio in that game, which was like some of the first times we've ever seen that technology and the the way that that game looks, especially coming right off of uh, what was the game that came out in December from the same the Callisto yeah, Protocol. Callisto. Callisto Protocol, yes. yeah. yeah. So Callisto Protocol, where we were all like, oh, this is kind of good, but not quite what we wanted. And then this just delivered on every single thing. And then to take it even a step further and just like reimagine the game from adding new story elements, but also reimagining the way that you go through it. And everything is one continuous shot, God of War 2018 style. Uh, you have these, these characters that used to just be your, like, pop up on your codec, Metal Gear Solid style. And now they're actually fleshed out characters that you care about. Um, so I think it took this game that was already like, I think peak survival horror and just made it so much better and, and completely modern. So, uh, I wanted to throw that one out there for consideration. Dope, dope, dope. Yeah. I, Sorry, I never, yeah, I never played the original, but I'm working my way through the, the remake. Cause I, I don't do great with horror games in general, but I'm slowly working my way through it. And I've actually really, really enjoyed, um, this game in particular. It's been really fun. So I don't have anything to compare it to for how it used to be. Um, but I've, I, I really liked it so much that it was going to, even though I haven't finished it, it was on my list as well. So, um, really good. Yeah, this game, this is one of the first games that I played this year because it obviously released really early in the year. And, you know, this game is both fantastic, but I also feel in a way like a really kind of great example of restraint in the video game industry in that the original Dead Space is one of those action games that, you know, in a lot of ways it holds up. Uh, visually, you know, it's obviously a little bit on the dated side, especially, you know, ten over 10 years onward. But like that game still to this day, like I think is an exemplary horror game. And I think what Dead Space Remake did was it really did an expert job of identifying what to absolutely not touch, what to leave the fuck alone and just let the original game's design breathe and where it could go in and apply a little bit of corrective coloring and make the experience that much stronger uh, through its little bit of like post-production editing. Really, really, really good time. Dope, dope, throw it on the list. Yeah, so we can throw that in the description on there too. <laughs> I mean, I love it. Was definitely, <laughs> Dead Space was on my list as well. So, like, I think oh, we yeah, got pretty Chris. unanimous cool. support. No, no, I was going to say, I think, like, it's just you guys nailed the why, but uh, it was also on my list. So, very cool. Um, Chad made a big thing about just throwing stuff on here and ignoring the big stuff. I don't know if I'm going to do that. No, you know what? I'm going to name a big game. Because it's my turn now. That maybe we forgot about. I'm going to talk about Diablo 4. Ooh, here we hmm. go. Here we Diablo go. Diablo 4. Surprisingly, my first Diablo game that I played at launch. Um, the first one of those kind of games I really cared about. And I don't... I'm going to start by talking about a negative. I think everyone's memory of that game is that season one wasn't very good and everyone fell off. Which is like, fair enough. The seasonal content probably wasn't the greatest at that point. But I don't want to ignore that first month of Diablo 4 coming out and the fact that I put like 60 hours into a game genre I'd never played before and I had the time of my life. Like if I ignore the games as a service continuing evolving game thing and I just look at the story mode and what I did with that first character and that second character, that game was amazing. Like I actually played a multiplayer game with people that I don't play with to play Diablo 4 because that's how much we were into it. I bought the freaking extra special good edition to get it a couple days early because me and Chad wanted to play it. Like that's this game. It really did that. And again, I don't want to hark on the bad stuff or the, you know, the games of service aspect because we just talk about the story and the, the characters and everything in that game when it came out and launched, like, dude, like that was the jam. That's all we cared about in the summer. So I feel like people forgot about it. There's probably a good reason for that. But if we go back to like in what July 1st or whatever, the game, I don't know. Uh, time is a, irrelevant to me. Uh, June or whatever. Like, this is all that we cared about. And uh, I'm going to give them a shout out for making like an excellent game and bringing me to a genre I did not care about. So, uh, yeah, shout out Diablo 4. Put it on the list. And I, think you, I think you put that perfectly, man. I, got, I could not have described the experience with that game any better than that because that's exactly how it was for me. For like that month, I got my money's worth, man. I don't care how I've soured on the game a lot 
since since then yeah and midway through season one and that's it i don't even play it anymore but 60 bucks for what i got out of it and how much fun i had playing with a bunch of people that i normally don't play with as well uh i thought it was i thought it was excellent for that um there's a lot of silly things with the game but honestly just bang for my buck obviously this is before Baldur's gate 3 that was my game uh where i, I just felt like i got a lot of fun for for the money it reminded me a lot of um if any of you guys played the division where it was a game that was a lot of fun for a short time like you know a month or two it was a lot of fun playing with your buddies and then it just you know it was really hollow right it just it wasn't as deep in, in in end game uh content but i still felt like i enjoyed the experience overall because i got my money's worth for 60 bucks so 70 bucks whatever so yeah, it's um, it, it's weird to say this because you know the Diablo franchise as a whole, and you know Activision Blizzard King are certainly not things that need our desperate love and support. But like, I think the argument can be made that Diablo Four is like one of the more underrated games of the year, uh, as you said, Adam. Like this game, you know, had a a slightly lackluster season one, but since then it feels like it's really kind of picked up and it's gonna kind of continue kind of building and building even more and more momentum. Uh, I thought this game was uh, a lot of fun when it came out. And something that we've not really kind of highlighted, I think, is just how unexpectedly strong a lot of the performances in writing uh, is in this game's single player narrative. You know, so many people come to Diablo for uh, the gameplay, the constant like uptick of numbers and statistics and going into the menus and trying to min-max your build. Uh, but there were some like genuinely great character moments a lot of genuinely great heartfelt moments that uh, felt like it really uh elevated the diablo franchise's storytelling chops as a whole and i i do want to shout that out it has my favorite cutscene probably um of the year now i've got one third left of Baldur's gate three um but i the only thing i would add is I think uh, the polish of Diablo 4, like given how much there is going on mechanically on the screen and that it's all online was very impressive. Like it was like, I think it was shockingly low on glitches and, and things that you would normally see in a, like a live service launch like this, like comparatively to a lot of franchises, including and Destiny, also, <laughs> which is a game I've been playing for a while. And, Destiny, uh, but also so Diablo 3 as well. Like, I think yeah. a lot of people going to this game were concerned, is this going to be a repeat of the launch of Diablo 3? And it really wasn't. Again, still growing pains, but not nearly as disastrous as that. Very cool. Throw Great. it on the board. Put it on there. I was going to say, put Baby it, girl, it, put it, it on sense. me. Uh, now we're going to go. What was, who was that? That said that? That was Ja Rule slash the board saying to put Diablo oh. 4 on the board. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just going to go in the order of the windows now. So Alec, you got your next one. All right. Well, kind of keeping in the uh, on the theme of genres that you've never really gotten into before. For me, I'm not much of a horror genre fan. So when I heard all the hype around Alan Wake 2, I knew I needed to at least give it a try. And man, it was one of those games I slow played the heck out of it. Like, because I I did not do great with those few uh, jump scares at the beginning. Um, but man, this game, it is worth it. Like, I stuck through, I think it ended up taking me about 15 to 18 hours to finish it. But the narrative of this game is the best of the year, um, bar none. Like, the story they have you go through and just the mind bending like kind of puzzles. Um, it's just insane. Like what they do with this, what remedy did with this game. Um, the technology, just uh, the fact of how they could just change the scenery at the, you know, uh, staff of their fingers is just crazy. Um, you get to play as both Alan and saga, which is saga is kind of more like your typical survival horror. Whereas Alan, uh, his is more kind of like puzzle based and you're trying to like figure out clues of like how to proceed the story or change the story to, so you can proceed through those levels. Um, yeah, this game, it's, it's hard to talk about without spoiling anything because it is a very narrative driven game, but it's well worth your time. Even if you're not into the horror genre, um, 
those jump scares eventually do, but I mean, at least for me, uh, towards the end of the game, they kind of happened so frequently that I was kind of able to anticipate when they'd happen, so I could kind of brace myself and uh, get ready for them. But um, yeah, this and of course, remedy. Uh, if, and if anybody's played Control or you know, like, there's always you know a couple like one or two set piece moments through the game, and boy, do these land! If you see, if you saw the performance at uh, Game Awards, that is just the tip of the iceberg. So I'm about a third of the way through this. This is like one that I wanted to at least get some time in before this show. And I can safely say um, that nobody does it like Remedy. And uh, I cannot wait to finish this. I am also like kind of slow burning it. Like I'll do a chapter or two at a time and then like Mm -hmm. let it breathe. Just because I think there's so much artistry in what they're doing. And it feels so unlike anything I've ever played before. And um, I really like it. Like I, I... I vibe with the weirdness and I think like mechanically the, you know, without saying exactly how they work or anything like the writer's room and like the, yeah. the mind palace stuff is so satisfying and interesting. And it's a game that I find myself like, I want to uncover every little inch of the map and find every little hidden thing because it's like, it's worth my time. I'm not just picking up a collectible to like check a list. It's like, Oh, something cool happens if I take my time and, and find something like neat. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I like that a lot. And I didn't even realize that until I beat the game. I was like, happened to look through the trophies because just playing through the game, you get a lot of the trophies and achievements. Like I saw I had maybe like three quarters of them or pretty close to that amount. And I saw I missed like two weapon or a weapon on each character. It's like. So there you can miss like pretty big upgrades throughout the game if you're not uh, looking thoroughly enough. I'll say I only wait two fucks super hard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that game is I just finished that earlier this week. And it's gorgeous and I was, too. First, it's a it's a it's a technical masterpiece. It looks wonderful. This is like, okay, some people know. Most people know here. I don't like Kojima. I like Kojima the man, I don't like Kojima the games. Mm-hmm. And this is the weird stuff for me that works. Like I'm like, oh yeah, like yep. Twin Peaks, but fucking X Files mixed together and had a baby and made a beautiful game. I can do that. Chad? Yeah. I can explain the whole story to you. I know every single plot point. I know everything that's happening. <laughs> I'm so happy that I can put it all together. Um, yeah, I adore this game. It's great. It's wonderful. The set pieces are great. The game looks great. The actors are all good. They just go wild places, and I'm like, this is working for me. So yep. I'm I'm absolutely... I feel like when we were watching Keely's Game Awards, I was like, there's three contenders in basically all these categories, and Alan Wake was one of those three in my mind. And, yep, you know, I, that's just how I feel. This game is... Amazing, and uh, yeah, I second or third or fourth this uh, nomination. I was surprised this year that I even played this. I like famously hated Alan Wake One, one of the worst really? games I ever played. Like I hated playing people? it. What? And what? and uh, so I wasn't even going to play this at all until reviews came out, and everyone said this is the like best thing that's ever come out in life since the second book of the Bible. And um, I, I know a lot of Christians are are forsaking the Bible now for Alan Wake too, but um, <laughs> no, I was I was honestly really surprised that I that I played it and that I fucking I was consumed by it. Yeah, and in all sorts of ways, like I was frustrated by it in so many ways. But those frustrations, looking back on it now, were like I was frustrated in a way because I was invested so heavily in what was going yep. on and what I was trying to figure out and the lore and the mythos and what's happening with the story in a way. Like I finished that game and watched five hours of, of people explaining that game to me because I wanted to be in it and I wanted to have my entire head wrapped around it. And even though I did have like some technical glitches pretty frequently throughout, I still feel like it was the most technically impressive game this year in terms of like doing new things and innovating and pioneering new types of of interaction and that kind of stuff in video games mm-hmm. so like this game's incredible it's fantastic uh, i'm looking forward to slash bracing for when we talk about this game because so far this is the most conflicted i've felt about a game on this list uh but we will save that for later wake baby girl put it on me <laughs> that that part is good the wake stuff in the game is good wake you think that's jaw rule in there too for sure uh who just did that who said that (laughs) who did that game i believe it was alec that was alec okay so chad you go next um 
I can't let this go any further without putting Cump Jump on the list. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. That's it. You don't have to write that one down, Cozy. Don't you dare put that <laughs> on there. <laughs> no, uh, Final Fantasy 16. Final yes. Fantasy 16 is the reason why a lot of people stopped playing Diablo 4. And it was... It at least started the first, I don't know, third or half of the game in such a fucking, you know, Game of Thrones, twists and turns, leave your jaw on the floor, I had no idea that was going to happen kind of thing. But then continued at least with the action and the huge set pieces and the, the icon fights and everything. It was just, it was so over the top and it felt like a, like a well-crafted, if, I don't know, if like King Kong versus Godzilla were made into a good narrative game in medieval times that's kind of what it yep. felt like <laughs> and it was it was fucking amazing and i enjoyed every bit of it until i played the final run for the trophy because that was miserable um but yeah final fantasy 16 fucking spanks baby i, I will say chad i totally understand what you meant when you said king kong versus godzilla but the moment you said king kong the only thing i could think of was a really bad king kong game that came out earlier this year yeah. And I was like, what? What do you mean referring to? <laughs> I get what you mean. Giant kaiju going at each other, it being really cinematic, but that was funny. Yeah. Man, like this is also on my list. I was almost debated doing it this time go around too, but um this is one of those games that I legitimately have not stopped thinking about this entire year because of some of those boss fights. Um the main one for me, because everybody was hyping up that Titan boss fight, but for me that Bahamut boss fight. Like, that's the one that stuck with me this entire year because it is just an anime hype moment. And I've got to sit in the rap. Right? <laughs> yeah, this is my biggest regret of games I haven't played this year, I think, just because I this is a franchise I've adored since fifth grade. So, um, and I'm old as fuck. I'm, I'm, I won't say exactly <laughs> how old, but I'm almost 40. We'll put it that way. So, it's been a long time and uh, I, I, I need to play this. That's the truth. <laughs> Does it go on the list? Yeah, take off Cump Jump and put on <laughs> FF16. <laughs> no, put Cump Jump off. That's no, not they, a real thing. Th there's enough space for both of them. Come no, on. there's not. <laughs> yes, there is. <laughs> Anyways. I don't know, man. I've got all, quite a few games we haven't brought up yet. So. Yeah, that game didn't come out this year. Uh, Chris, you're up next. Hmm. All right, I'm going to do one more, like, less obvious choice. And strangely enough, it's a game that I've not even played. Um, and I'll explain here. So I want to nominate Dave the Diver, um, which is a game that I bought. We're not doing and... indie games. Oh, I'm no indie games. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I, I was on last year and you guys said I kind of separated. So I was like, whoops. Um, but um, I intend to play it. I, I bought it to play. But um, over Thanksgiving holiday, we went to visit my uh, my folks and um, I installed it on my Steam Deck and told my wife like hey like you might like this um i've got to work on black friday so see see how you feel and then flash forward to sunday as we're like getting ready to leave and she's put 16 hours in two days like literally was like hardwired into the power outlet with the steam deck just playing the hell out of it and every day since she comes home from work and sinks like an hour or two into dave the diver and watching her like and she's not a gamer so like watching my wife is not a gamer connect with a game and like show me the funny cut scenes and all the mechanics and just like w watch her sort of discover the joy of a satisfying gameplay loop and like really great storytelling um it's just been a, it's been a joy because um like frankly i don't know i think it speaks volumes that you can have a, a game like that for a non-gamer that can suck them in deeply in a way that's not candy crush like esque like no no offense if you love candy crush but like it's not like mobile game um you know uh endless uh microtransactions or whatever like it's just she actually enjoys everything that she's doing and it's been fun to watch her overcome some of those challenges and um it has her asking the question like what should i play next which is like something i've never thought i'd hear come out of my wife's mouth but um yeah, i think it deserves to be on the list like and what i've seen like obviously i've watched her play like here and there like as we've been sitting on the couch or whatever but um it looks like a phenomenal game so yep dope dope anyone else play it yeah i played a bit of it i think maybe about five to ten hours i put into it mm -hmm. um 
I've, I've loved it. It's just one of those things with the way 2023 has been. It's been hard to just kind of go back to smaller games like that when we have these big juggernaut titles. Um, I enjoyed, did enjoy every bit I played of it. Uh, like uh, Chris said, the gameplay loop is just, uh, it's it's just perfect, honestly. Like, you, you know, you go through this underwater sea cavern that's procedurally generated uh, every time you go under, you know, how most roguelikes, roguelite is, roguelite games are. Um, and then you go into your restaurant. So it's one of those, it reminded me a lot of um, Moonlighter, where it had kind of like genre matches a couple things together. Like you have the roguelite adventuring when you're underwater, but then you have the restaurant management sim aspect of it, which is two things you would not think it works, but it really does. <laughs> so they look shouts like out they to go them. together, peanut butter and jelly. Like honestly, exactly. man, like yeah. just, just <laughs> like, I think it's smart how they marry those two things. Yeah. You catch the fish and then you, you make sushi. All right. Like, yep. Yeah. Very cool. Anything else? Or we can just throw it on the list. Whatever this song, uh, George, you're up next. Uh, um, I don't know which one to go with. Um, I don't know if I go with the obvious or something that might maybe won't bank the list otherwise. Um, I'll go with one that was just near and dear to me Fire Emblem Engage. Um, not sure if anybody else plays the Fire Emblem games. I didn't start playing them until Three Houses, which was a couple years ago. And Chris got me into it, and I never looked back. Uh, I was just dying for another uh, game like that one to come out. Some other Fire Emblem games came out, but they weren't the same like um, strategy, turn-based strategy games that they had. T whatever, tile-based, whatever. Um, but honestly, any time that you can get 100 hours in a playthrough on, on a game uh, these days, it's, it's, you know... I think it's going to be up there. So for me, this is like, um, it's not a direct sequel to Three Houses because it's a different story, uh, even though some of the characters there make a return spiritually. Um, the story in it is it's kind of generic. It's really nothing special. Uh, I think what it took is like, it took the base of that game in three in three houses and just made the actual gameplay part the strategy part and took it to a next level for me um the the combat in there the, the strategy that you have to approach especially if you play like a man and you play it on hard with permadeath and all that stuff um <laughs> it really it, it it makes the challenges uh it just kind of raises the stakes for that um there was much more intuitiveness when it came to approaching the different maps so to speak and how you're going to go about it um that i don't know i just felt like it took what was really good gameplay with a great story and it sacrificed a bit of the story to give you excellent top tier gameplay for that type of uh genre uh which which i was fine with because uh, honestly with that kind of game i just find myself breezing through the cutscenes and stories i just i just want to do the challenges of getting across those boards you know um or those maps so it gives you a lot more of that uh, the DLC for it, just like the last one, was worth every penny and really kind of, you know, elevates the game. So I don't think it gets a lot of love um, with it being, you know, very niche and uh, being on the Switch. But uh, but honestly, it's probably the game I've played the most this year, uh, second to, obviously, Baldur's Gate. Um, so definitely, uh, definitely recommend it. Um, but if you've never played any of them, I'd recommend playing Three Houses first. Uh, I, I did not play this game, but I will say, you know, some people took this game to task when it first released for, you know, being comparatively to Three Houses, much more of a story light experience. But I think it's cool that, you know, even in 2023, a developer like Intelligent Systems can go, you know what, our next Fire Emblem game is not going to be a game that's focused on topping Three Houses cinematics, but a game that is more insularly focused on just that you know, really addictive Fire Emblem gameplay. I feel like a lot of studios nowadays are kind of trapped in this vicious cycle of, well, the next Spider-Man game has to be even more bombastic and cinematic than the previous Spider-Man game. The next God of War has to be even more God of War than the previous God of War. And it's cool that uh, Intelligence Systems is still able to be like, you know what, we're going to make a Fire Emblem game that's uh, perhaps disproportionately focused on gameplay over everything else and people you know still enjoy it still buy it and you know everyone's happy despite all things 
Yeah, that's exactly what it was. You know, it, it's it sacrificed that. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. It's kind of a bland, bo- boring story, but the gameplay is is better. Um, but yeah, if you're new to it, start with Three Houses because you can't go wrong with that. You're gonna love the blend of the two for sure. Mm-hmm. And the fact, I mean, that game arguably has three campaigns in it in one, and they're all extremely unique. So there's a lot of bang for your buck there too. On the list. Oh, Cozy, that means uh, you're up next. Fuck, I'm up next? Oh. Yeah, bud, you're the next in my, my screens. All right, let's see. On here, the board. Let's see here. Do I want to do another... Jump can come up? Do I want to do another jump... Uh, do, do I want to do another <laughs> jump answer? Or do I want to do something legitimate? We're halfway. You know, we're over halfway through the list. I mean, minus. You know what? Down, you but, know what? I'll do. I'm going to alternate here. I'll do. A, I'll do a legitimate one. Let's talk a little bit. You know, speaking. I just brought it up, so I figure I might as well go a little bit more in depth into it. Spider-Man Two. Uh, Spider-Man Two. Uh, a game from a studio that definitely has not been in the news recently for some uh, <laughs> very unfortunate, and sad things that have occurred to them. Mm-hmm. Um, man, I will say, you know, this game might have been absorbently cost uh absorbent man i'm trying to launch myself into a big speech about this game (laughs) this game perhaps was not worth all 315 million dollars that it cost to make but damn i enjoyed myself quite a bit with this the original spider-man on the playstation 4 was a game that i had a lot of fun with i think it remains uh, a game from that generation that I really look back on fondly in terms of its gameplay, but I thought its story was a little bit lacking in moments. Uh, I thought that the relationship that uh, Peter Parker had with the police in that game was a little bit weird, and I thought that it oftentimes played things safe instead of really uh, kind of craning its neck out there to deliver a kind of like more novel Spider-Man story. And Spider-Man 2 really surprised me in terms of how much um, its sto- story kind of pulled its weight and delivered a narrative that I was not fully anticipating. You know, every single Spider-Man story at this point is always going to hit on some familiar beats, especially if it's a story as quote unquote known as the Venom story. Uh, but this game really, uh, I-, I think, took me by surprise and I think delivered the kind of level of quality writing that I feel like um, Insomniac is uh always has had in them and that i feel like they really managed to kind of execute on this time around i love spider-man too honestly the my only criticism of the game and it's kind of unfair because i don't mind it but it's just they played it safe to me like they they um if it if it's not broke don't fix it right they literally just took all the good stuff from the prior games and gave us that um i don't think they did anything innovative the story is top tier excellent narrative i really enjoyed the story uh it surprised me and some of the things the the creative choices that they made that i wasn't familiar with at least but um but i thought i was missing something that just really set it apart to maybe contend seriously contend for like a game of the year in my opinion i don't know maybe that was their opportunity to incorporate co-op or something or something cool like that Um, but the gameplay is so fun. Um, it's such a well-written story. Like, I mean, come on being, getting to play as, uh, wait, do we, is that a spoiler? What miles? He's right there on the screen. No, getting to play as Venom. Sorry. Oh, okay. Um, that was moment. That was awesome. That was so awesome and so rewarding and satisfying. Um, you know, but I feel like if they had just used uh, Mary Jane more, they would have been a lot more efficient in some of those levels, given how overpowered she was. But uh, <laughs> but it was a it was a really good game. It was so much fun. It, I mean, I know that I don't think they innovated too much, but I really loved the transition between playing both Spider Mans. I thought that was super cool. Uh, how there was things that were designated specifically for each one, and how you could you know when you're free roaming, you could switch between the two. I thought that was really neat, um, personally. So. And yeah, the my fast one, travel. Oh, um, just reminds real, real quick. Yeah, yeah fast travel. Don't mind. The one thing for me, because again, we we're talking about it a lot. Uh, when it comes to like polished and like feeling gameplay, like this is near the top for me. Just like, oh, yeah. and you're playing a video ass game, 
video game ass video game. <laughs> Iron Man Two is like, yes, this feels very good, and this is a very, uh, a fun video game to play. But go ahead, Alec. That's all I have to say. Yeah. No, I was just gonna yeah quick say like the fast travel in this game is just insane because you can literally pick any point on the map, and it's yep. just like you'll get teleported just basically in that general like vicinity. Like, yep. there's no like fast travel points like there were was in the first game. Though it is really satisfying to just go there yourself. Oh, yeah. Now that now that you can basically yeah. fly, man, that was freaking cool. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, there I think, is yeah, a trophy the, uh, yes. to get from one corner to the other. Yeah, I'm like, this is I had, impossible. I had to first. look that then, shit up. Oh, there was no. no was so I, good. I, yeah, I just, I couldn't do that oh, alone. Yeah. I had to figure. I had to look it up. <laughs> I think this is as you all kind of hinted at. Like it's it's Spider Man 2018, but everything got better and it's really good and polished. And I think the one thing that you also hit on that I think is unfortunate is that, like. It's one new thing is you get to play as two Spider-Men and they're both slightly different and they feel different and they have different missions and stuff. And then within a matter of days, Alan Wake 2 comes out and says, you get to play as two different protagonists and they're wildly different and the gameplay is different and the way they interact is completely, and it just completely, that new innovation in Spider-Man got completely mm-hmm. overshadowed by someone yeah. who was doing, taking huge creative risks, yeah. uh, which is unfortunate. But I think the Spider-Man 2 still deserves every bit of its spot on this list for what it is by itself. Yeah. The only thing I have to add is um, good job, Cozy, in uh, the correct spelling of Spider-Man with the hyphen and everything. Good job. Thank you. Oh, Spider-Man? Yes. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I did that uh, on a hinge messaging. Some girl asked me about some Spider-Man thing that was in my picture, and she spelled it with a, a dash. And I said, "Props to you for spelling it with a dash." And she goes, "Oh, my phone auto corrected it." And I was like, mm, "We don't need a date." Unmatch. So, <laughs> <one day. laughs> I, I don't know why I haven't even brought this up by now, but um, at the live like video game Jeopardy show I did at my company party, that was one of the prompts. Basically, I was like, the, the category was like bugs in video games but like not like as in glitches but as in like actual like bugs and insects and the prompt was like the protagonist of the only game of the year nominee with a hyphen in its title so yeah i'm 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 big into the hyphens i know that they're there Uh, Mm -hmm. i don't forget about their existence whether they're called hyphens or dashes uh, they're my friend i'm in the south we call them dashes all right cozy wait because that was george where's that cozy who did that i have had A good amount of this. Oh, well, oh, wait, hang on. Also, we can't forget that Spider Man 2 uh, put the wrong Puerto Rican flag. All right. That, you know, they patched it. Oh, didn't oh, yeah, that that was, that was fucking, that's, still, that's pretty fucking unacceptable. No, that's wild. <laughs> yeah. Was, Take it off was the it list. a Cuban flag? Is that what they did? Twice. They put it, yeah, they put a Cuban flag instead of a Puerto yeah. Rican flag because the, co- the colors are inverted. So, but that's wild. We're no, all Miles, same. he's both. Whatever. <laughs> Uh, all right, so I'll go next. I'm gonna do a Baldur's Gate three, baby. Go ahead and throw it on the list. There's no argument. It's going on that list, cozy. Oh, there's no argument. Yeah, uh, it's like okay. I've been waiting for a while to talk about it. This game, I've said it multiple times, is like the most ambitious game I think I've played in a very long time. That just like everything mad, like everything actually matters. Every choice, every character, all the characters are acted super well. Story is super engaging. Every choice actually matters, and it all comes around, and they tie up all those loose threads and give you a really cool story. It's AAA horny in, like, the best way ever, because it's like, oh, yeah. Again, like, I've said this, like, it's Mass Effect, like, the good parts of Mass Effect, but then in a D&D world with a ton of polish and, you know, a million years of development, uh, and just, like, everything about it is just, like, over-the-top amazing. Like, it is, it is astounding that this video game works and exists like at all like it doesn't make sense but they figured it out like between act one two and three it's like you're basically playing like three amazing awesome video games like you could literally just play act one and that would probably be a top five game of the yes year. there's and three games in there there's three uh, game of the years in here and it's so good and the, again, again the characters are so well acted and none of these voice actors are super well known you know that i knew of anyways mm-hmm. uh, but it's like no you guys are putting your all into it putting your heart into it it's like, oh, no, you guys are all great. Like, you start the game and you're like, this group of assholes. And at the end, it's that meme where, like, I would die for this animal that I just found or whatever from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. I haven't watched the show. I just yep. know the meme. Um, but no, it's great. And it's got the D&D-ness of it where it's like, can you think of an... Again, if you play D&D, you'll get it. It's like, all right, 
dungeon master here's an idea i have it's stupid as hell can i do it and the game's like go for it and then you can just or do try it. at least yeah try right. and see what happens <laughs> that's the same thing with story stuff it's like what if i wanted to do this let's try it out and see what happens like oh it worked this story moment this gameplay moment this whatever moment worked because you just wanted to try it out see what happened i was like okay i've got to kill this bad guy what if i like put ice on the ground so he trips and then i put 10 explosive barrels around him and then i jump from 100 feet in the air and land on him as an owl bear so yeah go for it and then there'll be a story ramification and we'll keep track of it and it'll come back around and it will matter and it's it doesn't make any sense and it's wild but it is i mean i don't have to argue with anybody it's fucking one of the best games of the year bar none it's great and again another one like inscription where i called it years ago but let's pretend like adam hasn't been talking about Baldur's gate three for years that's fine <laughs> that's right been, i have been hearing him talk about that for I, this to me yeah, was like yeah i think ecg was still around <laughs> yeah yeah he was he was he was talking about the early acts this to me is like this should be discussion for best game ever um in my to, to me this is the pinnacle of gaming at this point in in, in our in our lives uh man for 60 dollars in in a world full of microtransaction and unnecessary DLC and day one DLC, like I I just you know to me like I want it. This is a hundred plus dollar game when you think about what you're getting in, in in return for your money. Like I wanted to find a way to give them more money, so I bought a copy for a coworker because I was like I someone else should play this. Like someone else needs to experience what I experienced, and even though his experience will probably be completely different than mine um it's just you know i've never played a Baldur's gate before uh, a game before i've only done one D D campaign but this just uh, this is just to me incredible I've, i love this game so so much all of the characters the, the character development like I, I connected with all of them uh really and i, I don't know like to me this is in, in my top five of all time and, and i think to date it just this is the best game that the video game industry has has put out to date in terms of I don't know everything. Uh, it's just an incredible game uh, all, all around, and I'm I'm sad that I don't know that we'll see anything like this for a really long time. I, I don't think anyone's can, gonna be able to top it or come close to it, and it's just kind of like really elevated my expectations. Unfortunately, even though there's already developers saying to temper them because it's not happening. I don't know, uh, guys. One thing... Should we put this on the list? Fuck. We're not doing yes, indie games. Yes, you should. Um, the one thing know. that I'll There's add three is three spots on the list. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's your I, job. You have to convince oh, me. You have to quick. convince me, Chris. Yeah, should Chris I go on the list? It all hinges the on thing you. I was gonna add, if you haven't played this, like uh, hosts or listeners, like something that video games rarely do that this game does exceptionally is to make failure not feel bad and to make it interesting. So, like when you try to do something and it doesn't work it's often worth like like i know i saw a lot of people were save scumming i only will like save scum in this game if i i could not reasonably foresee like the potential consequences like so there's occasionally something that happens where i'm like mm. like uh so like we played and somebody uh like the dialogue prompt like in our group was may I see your loot? Like, very polite, right? And, like, there was no parentheses saying, like, what might happen, and then like, they just smashed the loot, <laughs> which is, like, <laughs> funny. Save scum, like, for something like mm -hmm. that. But overall, I like, I encourage you, if you play this game, let the dice, like, ride and just, like, see what happens. Like, and I think so many games don't do that, where, like, you feel devastated when you make a choice and it goes poorly, uh, and you kind of feel punished. This game does not do that. And I think it's a very rare thing for a video game to try to encourage you to just live with the consequences and not feel like it's bad. And and I like I can't wait to play my next campaign of this because I plan on doing things very differently. Like just the difference from playing like with a group and doing like kind of largely the same things uh, as my solo campaign, but still seeing like how like the butterfly effect will 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 kind of come out like just uh making a small deviation here or there is like just it's so impressive their their post launch support for this game is incredible too like all the stuff that they've given you extra for for free like the epilogue that they just recently added that was super cool uh, and much needed but like damn these guys are these guys are the best they're the best it makes me want to go back and do divinity like original me, sin me too <laughs> i'm going i'm going to go and do that and finish that it's not going to be the same but i love these people man yeah, yeah i've put maybe 20 30 hours didn't even get out of act one like 
I need to go back to this game. I'm absolutely in love with it. Um, going back to the bad dice roll, I did. There was one time I did save scum because I got a one uh, when I was trying to get Shadow Heart out at the beginning. <laughs> oh fuck! <laughs> yeah. So that was, I think I read like. Def- to my point, she does like like you have another opportunity to uh, save her. I think. I don't think the game is that mean. Yeah, so. but then she's that's... mad about it, though. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you don't want Shadow Heart mad at you. Yeah, that's true. Oh, man. If you right. haven't finished it or played it, like, it needs to be the next thing you play because it's 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 that good. Like, it's a generational game. Like, I, I don't know, man. Fuck. Well, that's Have we convinced crazy, you, like... Cozy? I mean, I don't know. I mean, there are so many other <laughs> jump <the> games. <laughs> All right. It's going on the list. <laughs> it's on the list. There you go. Hope you're happy. Okay, Alec, you go. I'm going to pee, but no one will know except for the video watchers and the fact that I just said it. Yeah, <laughs> everyone forget the last four seconds. Okay. Hmm. So this is... Hmm, I'm, I'm hoping that this other one, the other game... I, so I'm going to mention Star Wars Jedi Survivor for my game because that is easily one of my favorite gaming moments of this year. Um, try not to spoil it, but I'll just say the mining droid segment. Um, for those of you that have played it, you know, because that is one of those moments in gaming this year that I legitimate, legitimately like drop my controller, like set it on a table and just had to like pace around the room for a bit just to process what the heck I just saw. Mm-hmm. Um, this is one of those games that is essentially what I equated from Assassin's Creed to Assassin's Creed two, like that kind of jump in uh for for a sequel um what respawn did with survivor um they just refined it so well the different saber modes that you could have the customization for everything like you had the different sabers you could customize bd1 um and not everything was a stupid poncho this time exactly yeah yeah (laughs) although the poncho did come back but um like you could even customize Cal and like just the hub world of Kobo was just so cool and everything. You still have the different planets that uh, all had their explorable worlds for the most part. Some were a bit more linear than others, but um, yeah, this game is just another one of those that the, they just refined the sequel so well, uh, polished it. Um, unless you're on PC, unfortunately. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, this game was just one of my favorites of the year, and it, look, looking forward to going back and doing another run through because uh, I just you, you could you cho- choose the different saber uh, modes, and it feels like a completely different game the way the combat is. I'll say real quick because yeah. I came back. My bad, Chris. Just real quick oh, that no. uh um. So there's a moment in Alan Wake 2, everyone knows the, the musical moment, which is fucking amazing. There's also a moment in Jedi Survivor. Or I'm assuming that's what He's you're talking about because you mentioned Cal. Yeah, like so good. Oh my God. Yeah, that's the, like one the, of the mining best droid is what I. Yeah. Oh my God. So wonderful. Yep. Um, and yeah, great game. Um, lightsaber modes are good. And that twist of the villain in the game is like, holy shit. Like yep. that whole Did section. that coming. Is so it's so good. You get. I could tell George just having the same uh, like thoughts that I am. I'm about yeah. to be the contrarian of the Me group. Too. Her. Me too. I think I think the story but, was the worst part of the yeah. game, and I played it on console, and the performance was not a great experience. <laughs> I still enjoyed the game a lot, and I will agree that like I think they made great changes from uh, the first. Like I did like how they iterated on this game a lot. Mm-hmm. Customization, move sets with like the lightsabers traversal like please more games like just give me my original powers like right at the start like don't make me yep. re-earn shit that i got like i think all that was very smart um i really didn't like the story very much i liked aspects of it um i liked the companion stuff uh, the the villain arc was my least favorite part of it i just uh, it frustrated me to no end um it seemed illogical and irrational to me personally but um yeah. that's it the technical side i I do think it um, I want to see them make more games like in this universe. And I feel like the third game is going to be hopefully where they like they really like nail. Just just make sure it's it's done. Polish it when it, you know, before it comes out. But yeah, 
Sorry, George, go ahead. No, no, I, I'm very similar. Like, so I, I had it on my list because I think it's in the top 21 easily, right? Like, but this was the game that I was most excited for of any other game this year by far because I really enjoyed the first one. And I just love Star Wars. And I'm I'm in the camp where it's like, I'll take bad Star Wars, good Star Wars, mediocre, as long as it's just more Star Wars, man. Like, it's just, you know, it's like pizza. Um, you know, like I'll, I'll, I'll always take it. I'm just happy. And I'm not, I'm never going to be on the, on the, the camp that just shits on it to the point where they shelve stuff like mass effect, for example. Like I just, I don't see the point in that. But, um, with that said, I, I had a pretty poor experience of this overall. Some of it is just cause I think I hyped it up so much for myself that it just couldn't live up to those standards. Um, but some of it was out of my control. So I had a really bad game breaking glitch where i could not unlock by far which which i assume is the coolest lightsaber stance so the the kylo ren lightsaber the cross guard i couldn't mm -hmm. i couldn't get it uh there was some sort of game breaking glitch that oh no for the duration of my playthrough and even like two months later it w still had not been fixed uh the only workaround was to do another playthrough uh to finish the playthrough and then go new game plus which I, I don't, I'm not a big fan of New Game Plus. So I never got to do it. So to this day, I, I you know, I think I 100% of the game and never got to do that, uh, which was a real, which is a real bummer that I could, there was no way to fix that. Basically, it made that boss where you unlock it, like you can't kill him. You can get him down to 1% and you could never finish him, uh, no matter how many times they kept going back to that, um, that planet. So I know that was just a very specific to me. But same, I, I thought the story was very predictable. I did not like the villain whatsoever. I, I kind of saw that coming. And I just thought the choices at the end just made very little sense to me. It didn't make much logical sense as to why. I don't know. It just just seemed odd to me. Um, but but I will say the game was a lot of fun. Um, some of the, the Easter eggs I thought were really cool, especially for me being a big fan of that. Um, but... Yeah, to me, this game was like a like a solid seven, you know, for 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 me, and a game that I wanted to be like one of my favorites. I, I don't think it was as good. It didn't wasn't as satisfying for me as the first one. Uh, I was really hoping that this would take, you know, like a lot of sequels take a big leap, you know. Uh, and, and I thought this game was gonna be like an, you know, like an all timer or something like that. And it was a good game. Don't get me wrong. I don't want to knock it. I just was really hoping for that. Like, bam, like just. And I, and I don't think it was quite there for me. And, and obviously, some of my own experience with the game just kind of soured a little bit. But I, I'm absolutely still very excited for whatever comes next. Um, I will still play it. I still enjoyed it. Don't regret it at all, even with the things that I had. Um, but I, I, I was hoping it would be better. I thought it could have been better. Goth Mommy uh, Marin disagrees. I was, I was just going to bring up Mommy Marin. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, she's great. Like, I'm saying there's no complaints oh, there. No, no. The, su the supporting cast, I thought, is, is really good, as always. I think the supporting cast is arguably stronger than the protagonist, as it would, you know. Um, but, but that was, I thought that was fine. It's just the, the villain didn't do it for me. I thought Dagon was cooler, personally. Hmm. Yeah. All right, Cozy, throw it on the list, though. On the list it goes. Baby girl, put it on me. <laughs> Chad, what do you got? <laughs> We've only have seven <sighs> spots left on this list. Jesus. Uh, eight. We're getting rid of come Well, jump, yeah, come jump is not a real thing. Get rid of that, please. <laughs> uh, not necessarily. It didn't come um, out in 2023. <laughs> yeah, I'll be honest. I'm getting nervous. Like I neither did Dead Space, but look at that. Look at yes, Dead Space. It did. Dead Space remake did. Remake came out in 2023. All right. We're gonna go God of War Ragnarok Valhalla. Yes. It was shadow dropped at well, it's coming out in three days at the game the game awards. And it is one of the tightest, most polished roguelite games that I've ever played. I think the the difficulty and the complexity of your runs unfolds in such a great at such a great pace. Right when you think you're like you've got it figured out, you're like cool, I know how to do this run. They're like cool, here's an extra thing to throw your way, or here's a brand new environment that you didn't even know was coming your way, or here's a super tough enemy. It's now at the end of these things that you had no idea was there. So I think it, it, and it takes the combat that you are so used to now after playing both games for dozens and dozens of hours, and it turns it on its head. And you no longer have your support person, and it's just Kratos. And you're, you know, you're encouraged to use these weapons in new ways based on what you find. 
and what you're you're powering up and all of that is really cool and great but i think what also what makes it game of the year material is the fact that it tells in a very short time like this is possible to beat in like three or four hours if if you if you've kind of put it on easy and mainline good but in a very short time it manages to tell an in-depth really detailed like the last of us caliber personal story for kratos that left me like i was literally crying at the end of it and so like i it's incredible the fact that it's able to do that in this roguelite um free dlc that shadow dropped from the game awards uh, so yeah, it, it just adds so much more depth and dimension to Kratos, and I think it also takes the franchise as a whole and connects it so much more than we had previously seen with the new God of War 2018 and Ragnarok. We had seen hints and, and you know, we have returning Blades of Chaos and that kind of stuff, but then to take it and really deeply connect these two to the heart of the entire being that Kratos is, I think is an incredible uh, achievement. And so... Yeah, while it is a free three to ten hour DLC, depending on how you play it, uh, I think it is uh, absolutely deserving of this list. Maybe not quite as high as Comp Jump, but yeah, should be on there for sure. Definitely not as high. So I actually just beat God of War Valhalla last night. I tweeted about beating it like an hour ago, but that's just because I'd forgotten to tweet about having done so. This game's really good. I don't think I am, all jokes about come jump aside, I don't think I am as high on it as you are, Chad. I, I pretty much echo most of what you said. I think it tells a really uh, emotionally affecting story. I think that it serves as a great uh, epilogue to God of War Ragnarok's story. I think that uh, it does a great job of kind of remixing uh, Ragnarok's core gameplay and really kind of putting you through the paces and giving you an opportunity to uh, explore weapon com com combinations and possibilities that previously you may have never bothered with in the base game. Uh, I think coming out of it, if I had two complaints, one would be that while this game does have some pretty cool new stuff in it, uh, especially uh, as it pertains to Kratos's past that we haven't seen in a while, a lot of the content in this game is very familiar it is a lot of stuff that we have seen already in god of war ragnarok and b i was kind of hoping that there would be like a little bit more to it which i know is going to be a very controversial statement because i've seen a lot of people online be like man i love that this is a roguelike game that doesn't uh, like cost me a hundred hours not that people don't enjoy roguelites that you know, last 100 hours. But I, feel, I understand that, you know, for some people, it's like you want the experience to be done and over with. You don't want it to overstay its welcome. This game doesn't overstay its welcome. But when the credits hit, I was like, man, it's a little bit disappointing that looking over at my trophy list right now, I only have one trophy that I haven't gotten so far. I wanted to crack open that trophy list and be like, oh boy, what 10, 20, 30 trophies have I not gotten yet? What fun side objectives do I have to go after? And seeing that there's just one Coliseum Marina thingy that I have to fight in is like, oh, I was kind of hoping that there would be a little bit more incentive for me to do more and more further runs. I still do plan to go back to the game, you know, mop up some collectibles, get that final trophy. But uh, yeah, I actually, if anything, kind of was hoping there was even more of it. But I suppose that, you know, in a roundabout way, that's a testament to how good this was that I, you know, kept wanting to keep playing it. All right. Do you want to throw it on there then? Yeah, let's throw it on. All right, that makes Chris, right? Yep. Sure, man. If you, if you're, unless you're, you don't have anything, that's fine. <laughs> no, no, I'm just no, going no. in order. Just chat I have right? Pl plenty of yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Go for um, it. All right, so we're getting into, like, the more obvious territory here. Um, oh, please, like, I gotta throw. Yeah. Easily <laughs> come jump for God's sake. So in in a year that gave us the Dead Space remake, which is like just an excellent example of how you can stay very faithful to the original while improving, you know, all the things that um maybe didn't age so hot um from a mechanic standpoint, graphic, whatever. Um uh, it's impressive that we got Resident Evil 4 remake, which I, in my opinion, it's like Resident Evil 4, the original, is a perfect game to take that and to make 
uh or to, to put out a remake where like it is as perfect as the original with all the bells and whistles of amazing graphics and all the cool things that you would expect in a modern game was just was stunning to me like i remember seeing like the uh, the reviews drop and be like there's no way but like how like how how could it be that good and then playing it obsessively and realizing that they had somehow managed to capture lightning in a bottle a second time um like really my only regret with this game is that i'm never gonna buy a ps vr2 because i got burned on the first one and i really want to play this in vr but i think it's just it's it's an excellent game um and i have the fondest of memories from earlier in the year um with the surprises like uh, specifically with like some of the boss fights and um really just wanting to push myself to to get some of the harder achievements and yeah i don't know man i i think it's just it surpassed a new gold bar in remakes with a game that came out like what three months prior um and set like a new gold standard um that shortly after and man it just if you haven't played this uh it played the original not play the original it doesn't matter like play this fucking game it's so good so fucking good it's on my list uh one of the co-hosts over at shared screens uh josh he is right up there with this game like one of his favorite games of all time and he was telling me that hey if you can make it through alan wake 2 you can make it through resident evil 4 so it's not scary not at all mm-hmm. yeah i mean like, there's, there's bits that, that are action. tense you'll yeah. be fine yeah you'll if yeah, you made it so. through alan wake you will make it through this no problem so yeah. if that's what's stopping you like you're you're good buddy oh no um, i've already bought it it's downloaded on my ps5 i've just got to find a time to play it <laughs> good man <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, I, this is the only game I've bought more than this is Super Mario World because Nintendo got a Nintendo and it's like, <laughs> oh, wait, like good old no, backwards text. compatibility. Like, I'm sorry, like, uh, I don't speak consumer friendly. And you're like, well, but OK, anyway, yeah. All right, very good. Throw it on the list, Cozy. Hell yeah. Let's throw that on the list. Oops. All right. What? Just 16? That's fine. Just. <laughs> Sorry, I, I accidentally doused Resident Evil 4 remake in that invisibility potion. Give me a moment. Gotcha, no worries. Uh, while we're doing that, George, you got another one for us. If you um, don't, it's fine. We're getting near the end, so, you know. Okay, I mean, I I only have one more game that I've played, but I don't, I don't want it to be on this fucking list, but it's... Okay, well then don't. <laughs> I don't want it to, yeah. I don't, And I don't know, but I, but I did want to shit on it. Um, oh. so... <laughs> You got two minutes. Shit on the game real quick. The Man, Brody Scurdies. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, we could talk about it and you could get rid of it because I, I don't want to take the spot of a of a good nomination. But holy shit, Starfield was such shit. Oh, uh, I, hope, I don't agree. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hope was someone going to nominate it? That's uh, just real quick as an issue is like, would I nominate it? Maybe. But I'm like, top 10. I, I could see it not being a top 10. So I'm like, eh, am I really going to? I don't hate the game. I don't think it's garbage. But I'm like, I don't know if it's a top mm-hmm. 10 either. You know so, what I'm saying? Well, I enjoyed it's, it. It's the top twenty-one, you know. Well, the that's twenty-one not what really matters, <laughs> right? I bet you there's yeah. ten porn simulators on Steam that came out this year that are better than Starfield. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it. whatever. I guess I, get, I don't know. I feel like it. Maybe it's worth mentioning or talking about. I don't know if you if you guys have better nominees out there. I wouldn't want it to, it to take a spot because I'm 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 about tapped out. I mean, I do but have me- better nominees, so that's fine. but. Yeah, then, <laughs> then just you... go on to it. It's just a shitty game. I feel like it was just I not... don't think it's that bad. Would okay. you put Starfield above or below Cump Jump? I haven't played Get rid Cump of Cump Jump, Jump and put Starfield I was gonna say there. I was going to say above Cump Jump, but then you added the Winky Emoticon, and now it's better somehow. So It didn't come out in 2023. Cump Jump 1 came out in 2018. Cump Jump 2 came out in 2020, 2019. All right? You're playing around with the sanctity of the list. Get rid of Cump Jump. <laughs> But Starfield with a winky afterwards. And can, we'll get rid of can it in a I, second. Can I put Jerrica's pick in Georgia's spot? Sure, let's go ahead. Yeah, Jerrica yeah, had a pick it. she wrote in. Yeah, okay, yeah. so Jerrica, as we all know, is dead now. Um, she got the Poor flu girl. that everyone's go- that's going around. Um, and so okay. she's dead now. In a good way. She's going to survive. Um, but this is what she wanted me to say. So I'm going to read it just verbatim. Well, you might have heard of this book called The Bible. This book has a few things to say about Jesus Christ, but the story is not over. We are living in the new book called, quote unquote, Pikmin 4 Game of the Year 2023. (laughs) It's the book right before Revelations. 
I know for a fact we have found a toenail from Jesus Christ and have fused it with a houseplant to clone our new saviors to fight the Antichrist. Our savior now turned saviors are the Pikmin. And I'm here to write this book for you all tonight. They will raise you up. And then there's a final quote here. It says, best strategy game of the year. Audrey, Audrey called it a baby game, but it actually is harder than it looks. Quote Jerrica. This game is going on the list. I will say, I, I feel so conflicted about this game because you guys know me. I am definitely going to trump for some Nintendo games when I get the chance. And I really loved the previous three Pikmin games. My thing with this game is I felt like the difficulty curve in this game was a little bit out of whack. I feel like it starts just right. And by the, like, not even the end, I guess, two thirds of the way through the game, like you have so many upgrades and like the game, like gradually just throws up so little resistance against you that it's just a complete cakewalk in a way that I found honestly not super appealing. But I can understand how for a lot of people, that's actually the deciding factor that got them into this game versus the previous three Pikmin. So, yeah, certainly a there. spot for the list. Yeah, I'm blessed you wrote it from the grave, so you have to respect your yeah. memory. Yeah, this is posthumously, so. Yeah, is, yeah. Is Jerrica Jacob Marley, like, coming back to, <laughs> to haunt us all? <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so Cozy, that means you're up next. Please say the game that Nintendo people like. Let's get it out the way. The game you don't have that to. Nintendo people you, like. I totally you, I forgot. Will. Hmm. If you want, well, I will. Oh, someone's going that was to. The one I was oh, to. you want a, You want a game that Nintendo people like? A, He's going to do something stupid. Everybody <laughs> really loved. Ladies and too. gentlemen, Adam Gumbert thinks that I'm about to do something incredibly stupid. But oh no, oh no, I'm not about to do something incredibly stupid because I'm about to talk about oh. <laughs> Metroid Prime One Remastered. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Metroid Prime One Remastered. What's funny about Metroid Prime One Remastered, Adam? What's funny about it? <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm three shots in, and I one more than three. Couldn't tell yeah, you. It's great. Say, bro. <laughs> it's exactly. fun, I guess. That's uh -huh. what it is. Metroid Prime 1 Remastered. I mean, here's the thing. It's not even all that much of a different game from the original Metroid Prime. It's not like Dead Space, where they really went in and did a lot of, you know, behind-the-scenes rigging to really make that game feel super modern in 20. 23 but like it just speaks to the sheer fucking design of the original metroid prime game that they didn't even really need to do that much work and that game was as good as it was I exploring that game in like the kind of end game hunting down all those relics and artifacts and upgrades for samus aaron's suit uh and just listening to the like talon overworld theme so incredibly good so incredibly strong i thoroughly enjoyed going back to this game and man i hope that Retro Studios is really cooking up a banger with Metroid Prime 4 because this game was a kind of great appetizer to that, if it is. Just don't put it out on current Nintendo hardware, please. Mm -hmm. That's my only request. I think, the that's, the, I think that's the, the better pick. I thought you were going to say something that rhymes with Pooper Dario. Um, and like, yeah, Thunder. Yeah, two. Pooper Dario Thunder. Keep going. And, you got it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you? It sounds like you're going to nominate a game that rhymes with Pooper Dario Thunder. Well, we got to uh, go to uh, in the not, in the horn no. first. But Alec, thank God you're going to get to it because I'm like someone's got to say it. But first of all, cozy, please for the love of God, get her to come jump. It's not a real thing. Put my game yeah, that I'm about to talk about. to it. I love I, it. He put a smiley face after it too. <laughs> do whatever you want. Since we're getting to the end of whatever the list, Adam I'm, says, just write "come jump again" as number nineteen. Don't you dare! I will murder you in real life. Um, come jump two. Come jump three. There's so many games that I wasn't able to talk about. I think I'm going to do the one that I actually care about. Chris, I don't want to hear anything from you. Cyberpunk 2077, Phantom Liberty. No, I, I'm fully open to playing more cyberpunk after the reaction to this. Like, I'm going to start okay. fresh. So okay. yeah. no argument here, man. No it's argument here. Cool. Uh, easily the best expansion. Uh, I mean, just not. Even, I don't want to say the 2.0 update because that's kind of cheating just to be like, oh, they redid the whole game. I mean, they did. They redid the whole game. and It's uh, fucking amazing. But I will just talk about Phantom Liberty because that's what has came out in 2023. So Phantom Liberty just on its own. Amazing story. Again, amazing performances. Uh, they did redo the game like the game plays completely different now. You're in a whole new section of the game and it is continues to be one of the most beautiful games that's that's out there. 
Um, again, they did a lot of good in, in fixing the game for the people that had issues within the first place, which is good on them for doing that. And you get this amazing spy story, hang out with Idris Elba, new powers, new guns, new all of that. And then the, the main thing I really like about Cyberpunk is that they it's the framing. Where every time you sit down in Cyberpunk and have a conversation with an NPC, it's just like, oh, how about we just make like a fucking matte painting out of this conversation where like you sit down and then there's like lights behind them and it is, it's so good. Um, it's wonderful. And again, this story is so fun. It's basically like Mission Impossible meets Escape from New York meets Idris Elba is there. And you could say less because Idris Elba is hanging out with us. Um, it's such a good a spy thing. You've got to make decisions that matter. There's like complete, like two completely different endings for this DLC. And it's just like for a DLC to be like 20 or 30 hours and completely change a game and make it like what the initial promise was supposed to be. Like shout out to CD Projekt Red for putting in the work and getting it done. Um, and it's great. Like you can literally use a samurai sword on a motorcycle. Like I don't know what else you want me to say. Um, Again, it's hard to explain. It's great. It's a great game. Great expansion. Uh, it's wonderful. So I think it deserves to be on the list, especially with, again, all the love it's been getting and all the high scores and them like giving us the promise thing that we were supposed to get in the first place. So Phantom Liberty, just on its own, as that 20-hour experience, deserves to be on that list. That's Reaction good. was so strong. I bought this on PC with the Phantom Liberty, Liberty like bundled in, man. So like... Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm, I'm going to get back into it at some point, too. I'm, I'm glad that they finally finished the game that they released three years ago. Yeah, it's great. You should play it. Mm-hmm. In, the midst of in 1997, it they released a game that you oh, could also you know, use a sword on a motorcycle called Final Fantasy VII. It came out on the PlayStation 1 on mm-hmm. three discs. So, yeah. uh, but is that above or below Cup Jump is, on this <laughs> list is, the, is the main question. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, you guys really should play it. If you had any interest, you played it a little bit or whatever it, it it is it is the game that everyone wanted it to be so uh yeah alec continue playing that but alex put on the list I, I remember when we first talked about that game and adam was the only person in the world now, i got no glitches everything i'm went not the only right. person in the world <laughs> all the reviewers went, also had the same everything uh, went perfectly fine and for experience. me <laughs> all the reviewers had the same experience that game reviewed very well when it came out <laughs> Just saying. They all played on PC, know. but that his, doesn't matter. His, his, uh, his, his Xbox is just better than mine. It is. I also didn't have any problems with uh, Jedi Survivor, except for when uh, I walked in that river and I got 10 frames a second. Outside of that, no problems. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, Alec, please save us. Make this list credible. Um, if I have to, because I'll say, just say shout out to Party Animals. That was... Yeah, because that game—the best just, weekend of my life. It was so yeah, fucking fun. Holy just shit, absolute chaos whenever you play with friends. Um, but my actual pick—it's—I'm I'm surprised it's made it this long because I thought I was gonna have to be fighting tooth and nail. But it is Legend of Zelda: Tears of the Kingdom. This game—it took over my life when it came out back in May. Like I took, had that Friday, I had launch day off, and I legitimately played for like. 10 hours straight. Um, I played that weekend like because it was a bit warmer here. So I had my fan uh, going and legitimately like almost dried out my eye from having the fan blowing me sitting there for like eight hours straight just playing Tears of the Kingdom. Um, this game, I, I know somebody mentioned like uh, earlier in the podcast, uh, a system that I think uh, is one of the best of the year. I think the build system in Tears of the Kingdom is legitimate. Like the physics system is like the best thing that's come out in gaming this year. Like the fact that every shrine, there's like an infinite number of possibilities of how you can uh, solve them. Like there, it's going to do what Breath of the Wild did for gaming, um, but exponentially because there's not just one way to solve things. There's hundreds of ways you can solve it. Um, just a personal experience. There's one that's like, essentially like I couldn't figure out what the heck to do, but I'm just, when it's about like a, you're on a ramp essentially for one of them. And you just see, you hear a ball just rolling down and rolling down. And like, I'm just sitting there in the middle of the shrine, just trying to figure out what to do. And you just get that. It's the game of just the light bulb moment. Just like things are happening around you and it just suddenly just clicks. And on top of all that, they're like, Hey, let's actually have a good story this time around too. And 
there's times where the music swells, the combat hits. It's it's just in such an amazing game. Like there's not enough glowing things I can say about this. Um, yeah. Two things I'll add. I, I've seen people say like, uh, it's no Breath of the Wild. Like Breath of the Wild was better a hit for me more. Like no, like absolutely not. Breath of the Wild's amazing, but. Tears of the Kingdom, like, is Breath of the Wild, but, like, what I wanted from Breath of the Wild, like, where where it had deficiencies, like, I think Tears of the Kingdom, like, fixes all the proper dungeons, you know, great boss fights, um, amazing story, amazing story. Like, mm-hmm. so, like there's some story beats in there where, I, like, it's just, oh, so, it's so, so good. It's on an emotional level, yeah. Emotional level, yeah, it's... for sure. And, like, you can follow it and, like, care about it, um... <laughs> And the second point that I'll make is like, I don't think I've ever had 130 hours of gameplay fly by like I did with that, yep. with that game. Like, like, just, like looking at the clock and being like, all right, it's probably about 11. Like I can squeeze another hour and a half in and I'll be all right. And then it's like, oh no, it's two in the morning. Yep. I have, I have now set myself up for like a sleep debt for the rest of the week because I'm probably going to do this again tomorrow and the day after like, holy shit. So, um, Yeah. This Obviously. is probably, I mean, this is basically my uh, Star Wars Jedi Survivor in that, uh, conversely, I would say that the story actually kind of let me down in this one. Um, yeah. People that have listened to Responding Fire know the story, so it's very tired, so I'll get over it quickly. Uh, tried playing Breath of the Wild when it first came out in 2017, didn't click with me. Earlier this year, in the lead up to Tears of the Kingdom, I was like, you know what, I'm going to give Breath of the Wild another shot. Uh, played it again. Finally, it clicked with me. I really enjoyed it. Still, you know, did not particularly care strongly about its story, but I kind of forgave it from the perspective of this is a game that is going back to basics. It's trying to tell a very simple narrative and lay the foundation for something grander to come. And I just, I felt like this game missed out on a lot of opportunities to tell a story that I I feel could have resonated a lot more, at least with me personally. Um, especially as like in a long time Zelda fan who feels like th- these games like don't really know like exactly how or if they kind of want to exist within the kind of larger scope of the series as a whole or just sort of want to be their own insular things. But I, I don't want to go super specific into spoilers. To take Cozy's of- half enjoyment of this game and mm-hmm. add my half to make a full person. <laughs> I had the opposite experience where I was like, the i hated the ui for building shit i didn't give a shit about shrines all i wanted to do was find the story and and figure out what's going on next and so that's what i did i mainlined the story of this game immediately started by finding all the tiers and seeing all the cutscenes and doing the dungeons and that's what i did with the game and i had a wonderful time with it after having a a very bad time with breath of the wild so i Mm. quite enjoyed my time with this game because of the story for those of you that have played both, I've got both of these games in the wrapper, and I'm almost done with with uh, with what I'm currently playing. So, should I play that next or Final Fantasy 16? You should play 16. Metroid Prime one next. All of my <laughs> right, well, Comp Jump is next, but after well, that, no, 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 Metroid Prime one is next, you... followed by Comp Jump. You need the sweet with the sour. So you say you say. I think it, what kind of game experience do you want, George? Like, what what are you looking for? Like, you want to just like lose yourself? And hours? Of, do you want something more narrow? Or do you like, want Final to Fantasy jump? sixteen? What's that? What's that? Oh, jump. Jesus. Um, <laughs> I I think that would depend, you know, because like, to me, well, like, I'm right, asking so, the people who played it, who played both. What I liked about Breath of the or sorry, Tears of the Kingdom. Whoop. Uh, was that like I feel like I got satisfaction out of playing for 30 minutes at a time and like three and a half plus hours at a time like equally so like whereas like when I play Baldur's Gate like I don't bother booting that fucking game up unless I got like two hours like plus to play yeah, like, I, I work cannot shifts get for that game <laughs> what's that I was putting in full work shifts for that game like yeah. it's, I played an unhealthy amount yeah yeah so I don't know how Final Fantasy is like uh, Alec. You can probably answer like if if it's a game that you can pick up and put down. That might be a deciding factor for you, depending on what you're wanting. But. I would say it's not quite as pick up and play as because uh, like or Tears of the Kingdom, like you can just do a few shrines and hop in and out real quick. But Final Fantasy like 16, it's one of those games that it, there are some meaty chunks that you know you 
can't really save because I, I don't remember if you can save just in the menu or if you have to have specific save points. Been a while because I played at launch. Um, but uh, yeah, I would. It, it depends. Like, yeah, if you have more gaming time, I would probably lean towards maybe Final Fantasy 16. But if you have time, if you have just like a bit of time here and there, then yeah. So uh, Zelda in bed. Uh, Final yes. Fantasy 16 for long game, <laughs> long game sessions. Yep. Zelda in bed, right. you heard it. But Tears of the Kingdom is number 20. <laughs> <laughs> so, real quick. By the way, I, I don't want to harp on this. Come jump. Day technically, I'm out dis, uh, September 18th of 2022. So can we please delete Come jump for the love of God? <laughs> and well, we when did Come Jump Winky Emoticon come out? Uh, they never came out. It's not. It's unreleased. Um <sighs> I'm going to play this game now. No, you don't have Ladies to. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, <laughs> look your eyes towards the screen and tell me, is this <laughs> not a game that you want to play immediately after playing Metroid Prime 1? Look at how it many is. trophies. It's one of those easy play. It's like the 10-minute bullshit. It is a game. It yeah. is a game. It, it is actually, it is part of, of a, Land. yeah, it, it's part of like a, a grouping of like oh, other games that are like something jump. Like you have like stump jump and lump <laughs> jump and rump jump and come jump is like the 16th rump of them. But fun. I mean, it, it needs not be said that this is the best of them. Oh Lord. Uh, it came out 2022. Came on the list. So there's only two spots left is why I brought this up. Is there anybody who feels super strong? Like we're missing a thing that absolutely has to be, because I've got a lot of games that I like, but I'm like, they don't need to be on a top 10 list. They're just my personal Garfield. Picks. We have two things that need to be again. I would leave that out of the top. Yeah. We have two things that have to get on the list. We have two spots left. Does anyone have Chad? You raised your hand. Everyone else think about it. I'm going to finish off this bottle. Oh, (laughs) sorry, Chad. You want to go first? Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Because it's my turn in the rotation. So that is true. It is. Uh, Yeah. I almost didn't put Valhalla on here because I was scared that I wasn't going to get the chance to say Sea of Stars, which was fucking incredible this year and everyone who's, who's listening to the podcast knows uh, all about it but it gave us an amazing love letter to all of the the amazing jrpgs that we all grew up with playing on super nintendo as well as uh, it gave us garl which if you played the game you understand that he's the most perfect wholesome amazing character that's ever existed in video games and if you've beat the game properly which is by beating the game again with all the optional things because that's the real ending of the game then you know that it's 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 one of the greatest games i think that's come out on this generation and one of my favorite games of all time uh so sea of stars and it just it, so many twists and turns and the only the only thing that i think i wish this game different did differently is i feel like i wish it let you know what you were about to get into earlier in the game because i think a lot of people play the first eight to ten hours and like cool i know kind of what this is going to be and they completely miss the turning point of the game and and what makes it wonderful and amazing so uh, is it similar to like like the messenger where like there's like kind of a thing that happens like at a like at a point where you're like oh okay like i it is the same studio who created the messenger Right, and it has tons of deep ties to the messenger that I completely missed because I didn't play the messenger, so uh, I can't tell you that. Yeah, Guys. so the messenger, without spoilers, will, like does something like about the halfway point where, like, you again, kind of like I, I know what to expect more or less, and it's not like you're playing a brand new game, but like you're, it, it's like they've, um, like the game evolves like significantly, mm-hmm. and sort of like changes like how you interact with it. Um, while still kind of keeping the story and stuff intact. So, okay. Guys, I have something that I need to confess to. Oh, Sea of Stars is going on the list. There, there's no debating it. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I okay. actually, in fact, quite enjoyed this game myself. Chad's getting up. Chad's not happy. No, I had to let the dog out of my room because oh, okay. he heard a noise. Cool. Chad, I want to make sure you're sitting down for this one. I kind of hate Garl. He sucks. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, Garl, wow. Garl reminded me, and this is a weird take, but stick with me. Garl reminded me so much of Joy from Pixar's Inside Out in that he is this just toxically positive influence that Oof. frequently gets his party into trouble more than he creates solution to issues and nobody ever fucking calls him out on it nobody's like Garl, will you please stop causing the world to fucking explode around us 
the entire Are time you playing kidding? the game, I was like, what is this guy's problem? Can he just <laughs> please just fucking stay to himself for five minutes? He also, like, he just, you say, oh, he's this really wholesome character. He's really nice. He has no personality. That's all he is. There's no depth to him. Oh. That's all he is. I cannot disagree with you more, Alex. I said, especially in a, in a spoiler free environment like this. <laughs> after, after uh, I beat the game on Responding Fire, the main podcast feed, I was like, you know what? This game, uh, you know, is great the entire way through, but it has an especially good fourth act. And let me tell you, Chad, there's a reason why I was like, oh man, I'm happy with this fourth act. There's a reason why I was like, I am so, oh, so pleased that this act uh, is as good as it is. And if you've played the game, you know why. <laughs> Put it on the list, though. 21. Put it on now, the, list. Put it on the, the list. question. Now, let's fucking take Cump Jump off Get of this list. Does, it, does anyone have a game to replace Cump Jump? Because it's not a real answer. Alec is raising his hand. Chris is raising hand. Both, both of you both make your them. both of you make your case, and we'll figure out which one deserves to go on the list. Alec, you go first, buddy. Okay. So, Hi-Fi Rush. Oh, that's mine. Perfect. Okay, cool. Easy. Yeah. Sorted. It's, yeah, it's it was such a unique, uh, you know, like a beat em up and a rhythm game all in one. And the art style was great. The characters were great. The story was great. Um, and you don't even have to technically be rhythm rhythmically inclined to play it because it's you just do more damage. You get higher score that way. So you can still have all the joy and uh, go through that game, uh, even if you can't tap a button to the rhythm. Yeah, but it feels so much more satisfying like if you can stick with it and like oh, learn yeah. that. And like yeah. I just love that they had like a combination of like original music and then like oh like the first boss like here's a 9-inch nail song and yeah. like it's it it's like when the chorus oh, comes around boss the boss so cool the boss is going to do an attack for the chorus so you know like it's going to be like boom boom and like you're jumping over like the the drum beats mm -hmm. and stuff. Oh my god, dude. Like that that game is like the epitome of cool for a game yes. where like um, it makes you feel good at it, like just by a combination of like learning the mechanics, but also like intuition. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't know. Mm -hmm. that, that game is so fucking cool. This yeah, game the is boss good. fights are out of this world too. Yeah, I really yeah. like. We mentioned it before. That classical music box fight is one of my yes. moments of the year. Yeah, love that stuff. So put that place a come jump because that's not a real game. Get that yeah. out of here. I, I, I want to say for the record, I don't know if it's actually, you know, it reaches the heights of come jump, but it does. <laughs> Stop! It, 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 it doesn't it. have Garl. Yeah, yeah. And so for that reason alone, it deserves a that's spot right. on the list. All right. Does anyone have another game we can replace, replace Murder Sonic with? No, I think uh, it's fine. I will, being hold on. Game. Hold on. Can we put Starfield in Metroid Prime 1 slot? <laughs> actually <laughs> if you can give me the floor uh, as much as i Go do ahead. like metroid prime i do in retrospect wish i had actually put <laughs> another game in its spot now hold on hold on this is not a not a joke game it's not come jump to uh it's actually uh and i hope that you'll listen to my appeal and judge it wisely uh, a little game by the name of lies of p oh, i was uh, wondering when you're gonna bring it up ooh. pinocchio boy yeah, unfortunately, the problem with this list is like, I think going into it, we were all like, oh, there's no way we're going to fill it up all the way to 21. And lo and behold, we filled it up to 21 and it is bursting at the seams. And so I think in retrospect, I probably should pace myself a little bit better. Lies of P, just a like fantastic Souls-like experience. My Souls-like, you know, uh, legacy has been a little bit complicated. I beat and planned them Dark Souls 1 and 2, but wasn't able to fully get all the way through Bloodborne or Elden Ring, despite enjoying both those games and not having anything personal against them. You know, they didn't have Garl in them, so that's definitely a huge plus. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, this game was like so rich with atmosphere. Uh, the gameplay of it was just so incredibly fine. I know that like a criticism that people brought forth against this game is, I mean, it is like, incredibly derivative of you know some of from software's works but like usually most games derivative of from software's works are not this good are not again just this rife with personality uh rife with interesting weird characters uh rife with just like a kind of twisted madness that doesn't uh feel kind of treacly you used a lot of complicated words there but uh i hope that you can find it in your hearts to replace Metro Prime 1 with 
Lies of P. You would replace Metro Prime your- 1 instead of Murder of Sonic? I think that, well, one, Metroid Prime 1, again, as I talked about it during that entry, not tremendously changed over the original Metroid Prime. Murder of Sonic the Hedgehog, an original game, not Brand based on anything. Yeah. Okay. It was your pick. I say do it because we're about to go into a bloodbath and start killing a bunch of people. So All go right. ahead and get rid of Metroid <laughs> Prime for Liza P. You ready? All right. Boy. All right. And we have there the we list. go. I will read it through quickly. Now, what's going to happen after I read it? We're going to start cutting the list. We need to get to 10 games. After we get, again, not ordered, just 10 games that we think deserve to be on the overall game of the year list. We'll vote and we'll figure it out. Uh, and then we decide two that get to have uh, first round buys or buys to the semifinals. All right, the list really quickly. Street Fighter 6, Hogwarts Legacy, Armored Core 6, Murder of Sonic the Hedgehog, Dead Space, Diablo 4, Alan Wake 2, Hi-Fi Rush, Final Fantasy 16, Dave the Diver, Fire Emblem Engage, Spider-Man 2, Baldur's Gate 3, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, God of War Valhalla, Resident Evil 4, Pikmin 4, Lies of P, uh, Cyberpunk 27, Phantom Liberty, Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, and Sea of Stars are 21. So do you... I think we should just start from 1 and go down to 21 and figure it out from there. See what I'm saying? Just like... Mm -hmm, I don't know. Unless someone has a spot where they... You know, we're just going to do it for like this. I feel like we could all agree on like at least three or four games that have to be in the 10. Yes, we can do that. And then maybe go from there. Would it be easier to pick the two first round buys first? Yes. I think we do that because in in the argument, we'll guarantee who else gets in the top 10 based on who we think. So So I'll just start it. Baldur's Gate 3, I think, deserves a first round buy. Point blank period. Yes. Yes. Yep. I don't disagree with that. All right, put it in, Cozy. No one's going to disagree. It's fucking amazing. It's wonderful. I think I think Alan Wake 2 might be the other contender. That's that's the other one on my mind. There's other games, agree. but Alan Wake 2, I think, is in that in that spot, in that contention. So what I are the other agree. ones people think deserve a first round buy? No, I would agree with that. And as someone who hasn't even played Alan Wake 2, wait, I think it probably played the first uh, one. Really <laughs> Two is much I'll better. say Tears of the Kingdom. I Here's think. the one that comes to mind. The, I, the whole game awards, I was like, these are the three games that matter. It was Baldur's Gate, yep. Alan Wake 2, and Tears of the Kingdom. So I think those three are, are locks, Cozy, for sure. Yeah. Uh, my thing with Alan Wake 2, real quick, I alluded to mm-hmm. not absolutely loving it, but also not absolutely hating it earlier. Uh, I talked about this on the podcast. This game, Alan Wake 2, reminded me a lot of Metal Gear Solid 4, where Metal Gear Solid 4 was tasked with wrapping up and following up on story threads from like 10 plus previous years of uh, narrative heavy video games and was very successful in doing so. But as a consequence of that, uh, it's gameplay suffered in weird ways where Metal Gear Solid 4 was like a very technically impressive game that had a lot of depth to its gameplay, but because it so seldomly gave you those opportunities to really experience its gameplay, it, it you as the player never really became super adept at it and you kind of went through a lot of that experience sort of struggling more than you were kind of really kind of like getting into sort of the flow state of things and i felt very similarly with alan wake 2 where alan wake 2 mm-hmm. amazing story content like amazing world building amazing moments uh like the music video that we saw on the game awards stage but I felt like the kind of core gameplay of fighting shadow monsters and uh, deer people and whatnot just was not quite where it needed to be. And because those fights were so seldom and because they were so punitive when you would lose to them, I felt like it, 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 it just left enough of a bad taste in my mouth that I kind of came out of it being like, uh, not quite up there with some of the greats this year, but I have no, I have no qualms uh, making it one of the locks. So I think Baldur's Gate three gets a first round buy. So if people want to vote, do you think either tears of the kingdom deserves it? Or do you think Alan Wake two deserves it? I I'm going to go ahead and go last because again, I don't have a switch. I got rid of it. Tears of the kingdom was not going to be my thing. So that's where it goes, but I'm also not so blind that I'm like, I'm not saying it sucks. It's just, I understand, like, I'm not going to be mad if it gets a first round buy. So, Alec, between Alec Wake 2 or Tears of the Kingdom, which do you think deserves the buy? My vote is Tears. Um, recency bias aside, because I did just beat Alan Wake 2 uh, last week, so it's mm. it's still very fresh on my mind. Um, the way Tears of the Kingdom, like I said, d- just took over my life in May. Like, Gotcha. Like that's the only way I can say it. it. It took over my life. It was all I could think about. All right. Fair enough. 
Uh, Chat, what do you, uh, Alan Wake or Tears of the Kingdom? Alan Wake. Alan Wake. Chris, what are you thinking? Alan Wake. All right. George? I'm actually going to, uh, now thinking about it, I'm going to go with Tears of the Kingdom. I haven't played either one, but I think I've just heard more people talk about Tears of the Kingdom than Alan Wake. I think it just got to a bigger audience, uh, got more people. So I'm going to go with that one. All right. Uh, Tears. Did you say Alan or Tears? You said both. Tears. Okay. Tears. Uh, Cozy, what are you going for? I, I would still go with Alan Wake 2 just because I did see it to completion. And I mean, hey, that's worth something. So that's what? One? We're tied, I think. Three to two. Is yeah. it three to two? Oh, three to two? Oh, yeah, well, we're three to two. Did you vote, Alan? No, or, did um, not vote. Alan, I called you Alan, literally. <laughs> Adam. <laughs> so just to make it not difficult, I will go ahead and go forever the majority is. I don't remember. I am very deep into this. It's program. Alan Wake. It was Alan Wake to get the buy. So Tears yeah. of the Kingdom yep. gets right. in the top 10, but it, it was a coin. Tears of the me, Kingdom is probably going to beat whatever it goes up against. The nah, first I mean, I'm sure it'll be fine. Uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, so those are three locked in, Cozy, for sure, right? So how do are you a question for you, Cozy? Are you going to edit the list on the page in real time, or how do you want to do this? I have a second a separate one. layer on top of this that I'll reveal at the end when we've decided on our ten locks. All right, very cool, very cool. So does anyone want to make a case? So we have one through three. They want to make a case for four through ten. Like I, I think it's better to be like this one. I think definitely deserves in compared to like this one doesn't deserve in because right. like you know as much as I love it, come jump does not deserve to be in this list. So. Uh, <laughs> Is there anyone we like? This one for sure should be in there. Uh, I haven't played it. Don't you go ahead, Chris? Uh, I haven't played it, but I I feel like you'd be hard pressed to not put Spider Man 2 in the top 10 from the reactions I've seen, even if it did play it safe. Like, it seems like a lot of people felt it was snubbed. I haven't played it, so I don't know if that's true or not, but it seems like it was just a tough year to be in competition with other stuff. But top 10 seems fair to me. Yeah, it's not snubbed yes. for me, but I actually not would snubbed. put it in top ten. There's no reason oh, yeah. it should not be in the top ten. Hmm. I would agree. I feel, I feel pretty strong, yeah. strongly about Hogwarts Legacy. I think it's a better game than Spider Man Two. Personally, I don't know if you guys have, have if any of you played it, but yeah, I, I think it's a clearly better game than Spider Man Two, in my opinion. Uh, and that 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 got snubbed. It, that's just crazy to me that it wasn't anywhere. And I, I think a lot of people that did play the game would agree that it was definitely snubbed. Uh, at the game awards in, in terms of not even being nominated for me is one of my it was a top five game for me now would you say spider-man 2 to gets in though in the top 10 yeah no i agree with spider-man 2 I, okay. I was yeah no no i was second just making sure so put that in the, in the list i assume because everyone's saying yes to that mm-hmm. but then you mentioned hogwarts so that would be yeah my for you it's on there does anyone else again because i haven't played it i've had it on my wish list forever i'm just waiting for a sale i think chad's the only other person to play it between you two, do you guys think it should be in a top ten list compared to what everything we have on this list? For me, is, yeah. Is there a the? I think it could. We could put an asterisk next. I don't to it, know. It's, to it's it hard for me to look at twenty-one different games. Like, is this better than eleven right. of them with my eyes? Uh, <laughs> do you, okay. Do you think we should put an asterisk and come back? Because I mean, when we get to yeah, nine, I was and say, 10, can we it's build like a like, like an ambiguous maybe category and then put that in your see mind? Where we're at, at the end. In your mind okay. plays Hogwarts Legacy is in the maybe. That's fine with me. Yeah. Um, is there anything else people think? I- I'm just going to go ahead and say it. I think Phantom Liberty deserves to be here in the top 10. I haven't played it, so I can't. I can't. I, yeah. I, I, I also am. Um, I'm also like. Yeah, I haven't played it either, but I also have a thing on it just being a DLC. Like, I feel. When you have a base game already that all you're just adding to it, I, I just feel like it's a bit of, I don't know. I don't Let want to say, say it's this. easier, but right. But I don't know. I feel like we're struggling a lot to decide whether or not we should put games that we love in the final 10. I feel like maybe we should start working from the bottom and start killing off you want to start cutting babies stuff? here and there. Is there anything yeah. that I can say, anything that I can say to convince you guys to put Murder of Sonic the Hedgehog in the top 10? <laughs> Here's the thing. Uh, no. I'm yeah. so excited to play it. I do not think it's going to be a top 10 game of the year compared to what is trying to get on this list. Again, I I'm gonna play it, but I don't think it gets in with this there group. Were, well, what people. if what if we did that? What if we each like sacrifice one of the things that we nom? Because like I would do the same with Fire Emblem. Like I don't th- it's a, I I loved it, but I don't think it's a top ten game this year. Mm-hmm. And I'm pretty sure I'm the only one who played it. So yeah, you can, I, I will say if, if you're comfortable doing that, 
I mean, our top 10 decision and bracket is based on if we have not played it, what are the opinions of everyone else who has? Yeah. And if you're the only one who played it and you said it's not top 10, then yeah, let's strike it. Yeah, yeah. get rid of Emblem, I, get rid of Murder. I, I will say real quick, you know, there were a lot of visual novel style games that released in 2023. Mm -hmm. You had Goodbye Volcano High, you got... Um, what was it? Coffee Talk mm -hmm. Two. You got the mm -hmm. game where like the gods were singing and you had to sing at the gods. Yeah, Stray Stray gods. God. Yep. Uh, all these games, solid games. But I and I'm not. This is not a joke. I'm not leaning into the meme of it all, the cump jump of it all. I think that Sonic the Hedgehog, Murder of Sonic the Hedgehog, might have them all beat in terms of just being just a unit of a game. Which I know. I think the best thing about that game sound so much younger than thing? I actually am, but. Genuinely, I think the best right. thing just might be that they killed Sonic in that game, <laughs> or did they? <laughs> but there is one thing that we are going to kill, and it's murder of Sonic the Hedgehog. All right, murder. Oh, gone. Roman Gage is also gone because George agreed that he's the only one who played it, and he doesn't say it's a top ten. So we gotta get rid also of that. Also, dead. I, I think you you can nix Dave the Diver as well. Like I I wanted Whoa. to just no one has played it. We're on a murder spree. <laughs> Yeah, I, I well, you know, like I, I think it, it is it a top twenty game this year? Like, absolutely. Like, yeah, yeah, but like yeah. being realistic with mm -hmm. like some of the stuff on here, I think like I'm totally fine. So I'll, I, I'll kill one of my darlings. Yeah, yeah. I'll say I, I love her to death, but Jerrica's not here because she passed away. Pikmin four, get it off the list, but kill it. <laughs> no yeah, one else played it, but you and you don't like it, so it doesn't really make sense to I don't, put that on the list. Yeah, I don't hate it. It's good. I, again, I think the difficulty curve is a little borked, but yeah. Jerrica, stop getting off. sick and come on the podcast so you can defend it. There we go. About Valhalla. <laughs> Jerrica, I have nothing against you. I'm just speaking to my own experience. For me, Valhalla is an asterisk because I'm not as into it as as uh, as Chad is, but I'm like, maybe it's the 10 spot. That's Because I have been in. I'm like, it. maybe it's the 9 What's or 10 spot. Maybe? So I'll That's, leave that there for yeah. now. I was going to say, I've been like slowly on my end kind of like tabulating like the first draft of what my own personal top 10 game of the list is and like god of war valhalla right now is like that is the perfect game to shoe in at the top 10 spot yeah and so like i don't think we should eliminate it right away but also i feel like we don't necessarily need to put it above some of the other heavyweights no 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 so this is hard because i'm like at this point what do we kill completely um the fuck i don't know my only thing that i if it's based on what I nominated, I guess it'd be Diablo 4. I don't think it deserves to get nixed, but I think... Oof. Again, I really, that first month was great, but I'm like, after that, I, I don't know. I don't really like that, but if that, I have to use one of mine, that's yeah. the one. Yeah, I, just, I, I disagree. Think, I, I would... Diablo 4 would be in my top 10. Yes. Like, yeah. I, there's there's several games here that I feel pretty confidently shouldn't be in the top 10, but... Mm -hmm. If I had to go ahead, man, one speak of mine. your truth, George. Oh, no, no, I'm just, I'm just, I, I just, for me, I'm just being consistent. Like the DLC thing, yeah. you who said uh, Valhalla was three, it could be beaten three hours, three to four hour game. Like, I just feel like it's not, it's not fair to, I'm glad that they're getting the recognition. It's, it's, I think it's difficult for you to take that mm -hmm. game and then compare it, like the work that they had to put into making just that DLC and compare it to something that they've built from scratch. Um, it's also not a game, you can't buy. God of War it, Valhalla. That that's the you know, argument that I would make for that. Same thing with I, Phantom Liberty. Yeah. I think both of those die for me on the board because yeah, for me, you can't. Too. They're not standalone purchases. Purchases. Phantom Liberty, I, I know, is really deep, you know, and it's very good standalone. Uh, you know, for me, Valhalla would be below that. But I just feel like you've got a massive base of a game to build off of. Mm -hmm. you're, you're you're starting off with a massive head start compared to the other you know the other games here that are building something from i will from say the it, is the, up. it is the eighth highest rated game on metacritic for the year by the way just a big heads up i mean i will say as somebody that because i did just start over for uh cyberpunk to, because they did change so much um that it does even though it is i'm playing through the same story beats the game does feel completely different because of all the improvements the revamping they did um to the base game i also oh, wonder two, how i think it's the most deserving because they had the 2.0 that came yeah. out with the the thing but still mm. I, I got I a question i'll go, oh, go ahead alex no you go ahead uh i was gonna say uh a game that we've got a piece of i bad. feel bad saying this uh, a game we've not talked a whole lot about is dead space i love mm. dead space a lot but I think the fact that it's not a game we have circled back to makes me feel like it's time on this list might be up. I mean, I didn't play it, so. I, I agree. I, I, I think like it, it's an excellent game, but I, I'm not sad to see it off the top. Top 10 is like, 
and it, yeah, in a year agree. like this, like that's hard to. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I got a how... question. Oh no, go you go ahead, Alec. I don't want to interrupt you. I was say if we're going through like just the whole thing, I'm like trying to cut like one of ours. Like, as much as I hate to say it, I think I'd have to cut uh, Jedi Survivor because I mm. think Street Fighter Six deserves a spot in the top ten because of what it does for fighting games and what it does for that genre to bring new people in because fighting games, they are live or die by the player base and what they do, what street fighter six does for fighting games to help bring new players in is something that should be applauded and uh, shouted from the rooftops. I will say to back Alec up that I do think street fighter six is deserves me the top 10 based on reviews and based on his argument. Um, I don't like having to sacrifice Jedi Survivor, but I can see if enough people are like, it doesn't make a top 10. My personal aside, if people think that, then I i mean, I guess. I would prefer Street Fighter 6 over Do we... Star Wars, even though I prefer I'm Star Wars. I'm popping a murder. I... Bro- I got a murder uh, yeah. boner, like watching yeah. Jedi Survivor get the axe on. <laughs> no, like, I mean, I'm... no, I'm, I am I will try to make a case for Survivor, even though I was down on it, because it, like, to me, it's like a fringe top 10 game. I don't think it has a shot to contend in the top 10 because I think it's just like on the outside looking in or maybe in the top 10 because I think it was it was still really fun. It was still a really good game. But when I factor in some of the games that I haven't played and how they've reviewed and what I've heard from others, like I think if I played more of the games on this list, I'd feel more comfortable with it being out, you know, despite me enjoying it. So I, I think I'd be OK with it, you know, yeah. as the sure. biggest fan of it here. I think you can get rid of it. George, give me your best Palpatine execute order 66. <laughs> <laughs> execute order 66. I don't know, man. Perfect. That's good. <laughs> My next one um, that I want to talk about. Oh, no. Uh, Chad, you go for it. I'm very drunk. Well, I was, uh, before we decided we were going to murder Jedi Survivor, I was going to offer a, another one that I'm curious everyone's feelings about, and that's Hi Fi Rush. One of the conversations we had recently when Alex and I both played it a couple weeks ago is does this feel like. Uh, and at the time it came out, it definitely was like, whoa, Game of the Year contender right now. But like mm-hmm. after the whole year, does it still feel like a top 10 Game of the Year contender? So yeah, for that me, that's like nine or 10. That's, that's like asterisk for me. on the, yeah, yeah. On the edge. Yeah. So yeah, we can come back to that. Mm-hmm. I will uh, question again. I'm excited. and I would love to play it. Chris, Armored Core 6. Do you think? What do you think? Another asterisk. That's another asterisk, man. Okay. Like if it ended up at 11 or 12, would I cry foul? Like, nope. Um, but I, I would put that over Valhalla or Phantom Liberty because I, I strongly disagree mm-hmm. with those being considered yeah. games. They're not games, they're DLC. Like I'm with Chris, by... man. What do we need to do to axe those two? Because I like I'd be those I'd two... be disappointed if those made your top ten. We should put them out and it's not taking away from what they're doing. They're not games. No, they are they expansions. Not... They count. <laughs> they're expansions. Yeah. Uh is there anyone oh, fuck this gets hard then? The, I, I get go on a shout out. Sea of Stars, because I, I, well, I haven't played the game. I've played the demo for it. I think it was Steam Next Fest where they had it. And, man, that it's just such a gorgeous art style. Like the hour or two I think I played of it was awesome. Like, I already have it downloaded. I'm probably going to start playing it after the podcast tonight before I go to bed. Uh, got downloaded on my Steam Deck for when I go to my parents uh, this weekend. And I, I think it should be a, a lock for the top ten. Fuck yeah, Alec. Yeah. Fuck yeah. The people that love that game, like they've sold me yeah. on their passion. I That's mean, like, it's it won best like, indie, it's... <laughs> your indie game, like yeah, yeah, it's game fine. awards. Like it's yeah. That's Girl. I mean, this game is uh, legit. If we're talking my own personal list, like this is going number one or two on my personal game of the year. So like, of course, I'm passionate about it. But yeah, yeah. I'm okay um, with being on the list. How do you guys feel about Hogwarts Legacy? I know George loves it, but is there enough yeah. of it to get through? That's how, how how I how you guys feel about Sea of Stars is how I feel about Hogwarts Legacy. It's just a bummer. But no, wait. Um, you said you played it right, like, and you're like, it's fringe top ten for you. Like, do you think it uh it got snubbed? Like, I do feel like it got snubbed at the Game Awards, being not nominated for every yeah. for anything at all. I don't know. It's tough for me that I never finished it either. I can't remember yeah. what came out, that, but I yeah, I never finished it. I'll tell you what, man. I will nix Armor Core Six if you guys will just concede to the Phantom Liberty God of, God of War of Valhalla. That gets rid no, of three games. I don't want right to do there. that because I think Armor Core Six should be on the list. I, I'm, I'm, I'm. Yeah, I think those. I, I think Armored Core Six is like a a fringe game for me. But yeah, it, well, I back to the DLC thing. Is there anybody else that feel like? Is there two or more people that feel strongly about something being off the list? You know, I mean, what? I'm the Phantom Liberty guy. If no one else wants it, that's fine. I'm going to put it on my own because it is great. 
<laughs> I'll say this right it, now. I, I, need, it, but... I need Chad support on this, but like, I love God of War Valhalla. That's a fun time. Again, had my grievances with it. I'm totally fine keeping it off the list. I... <sighs> I would, I might be fine depending on what goes on instead of it. <laughs> the negotiate. Yeah, right. Here's I, what we do. I will In, say this. You don't <laughs> separate, you, oh. like, skew where you could just download and play God of War Valhalla. Here's the thing, chat. Yeah. My yeah. It's not, it's not a game. Like, it's not a game. My grievances yeah. with a character whose name may or may not rhyme with Barl aside, <laughs> I'm totally fine with Sea of Stars going to the final 10. Here's what I'll say. I'm with you, Cozy. As much as I... Again, the reviews back me up and the rewards back me up, so I didn't lose this one. I'm fine not including Valhalla or Phantom Liberty, just for the case of these are just yes. in a year with so many cool original games. Mm -hmm. Even though I fucking love Phantom Liberty, and it's obviously one of the best games of the year. That's fine. I'm not wrong. If we nix both of those, I think it's fine because I do like I War Valhalla, but like making the argument about they're just expansions or DLC, and we're we're arguing about what gets in the top ten. I feel like those are fine to go. Yeah, and that does here's the thing that makes it we have to strike five more things from this list mm -hmm. and that takes care of two of five and that makes the decision go. easy yeah do it. right <laughs> it'll be on the list individually but that's fine that it's not on the overall raft list that, but yeah. what adam, it's worth adam I, I i think it's even tough to compare valhalla to phantom liberty like i don't even think those oh family know. is much better obviously yeah no i i, I just is i don't think it's yeah, it's, Adam, Adam, it's amazing. <laughs> I screamed Ares when I took off Valhalla. You need to scream something from Cyberpunk Phantom Liberty. Idris! <laughs> right. I was in that bad <laughs> Dark Tower movie. <laughs> God, remember what that? Is, what does is, what is Stringer Bell say right before he gets capped? Like, get on with it, motherfucker. <laughs> just, My just show went like, on too long. <laughs> the, the Wire for people who, I mean, I feel like the statute of limitations is up on that. But anyway. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So we have three more we have to get rid of overall, right? Yes. Correct. Okay. I'll say it now. And, but it's just, a, this is an Adam thing. It's not an mm -hmm. overall thing. I don't care about Final Fantasy. Point blank period. Never have, never will. People like it. Do you guys think it deserves to be on this list? Again, Adam doesn't personally care, but that doesn't mean it doesn't deserve to be on the list. Do you guys think it's a top 10? Yeah, because we haven't talked about yeah, Final Fantasy 16 yet. I agree. I would definitely pick 16 over Hogwarts Legacy. Okay. I have I've not played Final Fantasy 16. I have played Hi-Fi Rush, and I would put it over Hi-Fi Rush. I think that sounds okay to me. Like not having played Final Fantasy 16, like I think Hi-Fi Rush is very cool. That's one of those like early honorable mentions. I think that would be like just didn't quite make the cut. Um, I really like Hi-Fi Rush, but. How about I'd this? Be okay with that, not having about, played both of them. How about we make this easy? We have to eliminate three. What are the four bottom games? And then we just had to cut one of them. It, are, just speaking for me, four bottom would be Hogwarts Legacy, Hi Fi Rush, um, Lies of P, and fucking throw whatever else you want in there. I can't think. For me, that's the bottom three, but we need a bottom four and decide which is the only one or the only one that gets to live. So for me, Hogwarts, uh, whatever I said. Uh, Hi-Fi and Lies of P, I think, are the bottom three for me. If you wanted to make a bottom five, it'd probably be Hi-Fi hi -fi and Armor Core Six. Seemed like the other two that would yeah. be in that like kind of maybe care category. Mm -hmm. so I would it. agree. Hi-Fi is in there for me. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Cut, yeah. I think cut probably. that. We seem pretty unanimous on that. Like. Yeah. I think that that takes care of one of them. Right. Somebody needs to scream something from Hi-Fi Rush. Oh, I don't know. You I press the button on February. one, but the action happens on two. <laughs> there we go. On the ones and twos. Bye bye, yeah, hi-fi. Well, Adam disappeared, and now we can't continue the podcast. Yeah. Our, our train of thought completely evaporated. Where did Adam go? I don't know. Um, had to pee so like had, if anyone put the Mario RPG remake. It's the kid that's like holding it and just like shaking oh, yeah. it controlling. Like that was him. He's just <laughs> like, I can't Mario, hold it anymore. How, how did Mario Wonder not get on this list? Good game. It was my last game to put on it. here, but yeah. Mario Wonder was good. It, it was a good game. Uh, I saw insane people being like, "It's better than Super Mario World and Mario 3. I'm like, I'm like, no, no, it's not. Like, it's a joyous, fun, great Mario game, but like, no. Yeah, I didn't play yeah. it because QVC screwed me out of uh, sending me my copy. Got lost in the mail, mm -hmm. and they just oh. reissued me a refund. So, 
Adam, Adam, while you were gone, we decided Mario Wonder is not on this list. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fine with it. So don't worry. So I see Hi-Fi Rush got axed out, right? Yes. Yep. Yeah. So we need two more. Oh, I'd say, um, yeah, I don't know. For Just throwing out arguments there. For me, I think Armored Core 6 is a, a bit niche. Um, I think the same, could, personally, I think the same could be made for Street Fighter 6, despite everything, uh, all the positive things I heard about it. You're just games for mostly a specific subgroup um and then i'll defend played street it. fighter 6 to the grave and i've not even played that like i think no no i've heard amazing that... things i'm just i'm just thinking about i'm just thinking about niche, like, yeah yeah niche yeah and then yeah. if if we're being consistent yeah. with uh resident evil 4 is also a remake which we asked that dead space um which uh it's not it's not obviously not a dlc but again you have something to to work mm. with mm. um but again, I haven't played either three of those games, so that's why I, I'm just... That is the thing. I, I know people in the industry really like Resident Evil 4. I personally have no attachment to it. How do you guys feel about that one? Same I remake never deserves to stay. Like, even if that's 10, like that deserves to... Okay. That, I mean, and again, a perfect game like to... Where like I liked Dead Space Remake. I think it did a lot of good good stuff. Like Resident Evil 4 Remake was that like elevated, right? Mm -hmm. Um. It's hard if you haven't played it to understand okay. why. But I have nothing against Resident Evil Four. It it is, and this is ironic, but I think Resident Evil Four is kind of hurt by the fact that we've gotten so many good to great Resident Evil games, both uh, original and remakes, as of recent. If Resident Evil Four remake was like the only of its kind within the past few years, we'd be like, wow. This is incredible, but we've also gotten seven and eight and two remake and three remake, which have all been again varying levels of good to great. And it does kind of feel like, oh yeah, it's the it's the best the, of the those games. Resident though. Evil game. It's and, and it's I'm totally than seven, I, I don't disagree with eight, that. Eight, two, but... three, yeah. That's that's my argument. It's like I, I think like it managed to like clear a bar that was already well, pretty high. Well, what if we did? What if we did this? So here's uh, I just. Armored Core 6 was Chris's nomination, and Chris was up a little bit ago, like, conceding to leaving it out, right? And then the other game that I really haven't heard much about after it was nominated was Lies of P. I've heard good things about it, but I don't know if there's I like enough Lies of P. So, you, you haven't heard support? about the P organ? I like Lies of P a lot. <laughs> yeah, you play yeah. with your P organ, you get better, yeah. yeah. Okay, I got an idea for you guys. What if each person says they're bottom two, Okay. and then if things start matching up, then that's what gets axed? Okay. okay. I'll, we need two to yeah. I'll start. <laughs> My I know we haven't played. It is what are, it is. We're just doing our best. Based on the argument. My bottom two are Hogwarts Legacy mm -hmm. and then Diablo 4 and Armored Core 6. <laughs> what? That's three. That's three. Pick one <laughs> between Armored Core and Diablo. Which one would you put? Oh, piss. Based on the Armored argument and based on what do you think will be Armored Core it? 6. God damn so it. You say Hogwarts and Armored Core. Uh, George, what do you think? I would say Armored Core 6 and Resident Evil 4. Okay, and guys, keep these in mind because I cannot keep, I cannot do math. I cannot do math. Okay. Or just got to wait for one of them to, yeah. so to far, go twice. So far, so Armored Core 6 has Armored two Core. votes. Okay, Alex, what do you have your bottom two? Uh, I would go with Hogwarts Legacy and Resident Evil 4. Okay. So there's, uh, oh, there's three with two votes now. Yep. Okay, Alex, or uh, not Alex, uh, fucking Chris, not Chad, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I would say Hogwarts Legacy and... Mm. Liza P. Okay. Alec? Uh, Hogwarts Legacy and Diablo 4. Okay. Uh, okay Hogwarts so Legacy we've, was... We've axed Hogwarts yeah, Le so Legacy, Hogwarts Hogwarts Legacy. and now goes. Diablo 4, Armored Core 6, and Resident Evil 4 are all tied with two votes. They are? Resident Evil 4? No, 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 they... yeah, no, no, no. It was, it was, it was Armored Core. only has one, I think. Yeah, it was Armored, Armored Core and oh, Resident Evil Oh, yeah, you're Evil right. I, I would oh, do yeah, my, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You're right. So now that yeah. I don't even need to vote at this point. Wait, but but yeah, aren't those the last two that we need to... Well, that's what I'm saying. We only uh, need to get one more. So between yeah. Armored Core uh, 6 and Resident Evil 4, what do you guys think deserves to go and deserves to stay? I... That's well, it's really man. Chris's choice, isn't it? Because he's the yeah. most informed. Like he's the only yeah. person that played he's both. Played them, he's played them both. It's right? true. None of us have played. Has anyone I, played I would, any of these games? Yeah, Besides I haven't. Chris. I would. I would ask oh, under great protest. Probably Resident Evil Four because it is a a remake. Mm -hmm. That's okay. what I would. I would say the same exact thing. You're the expert. We're gonna listen to you. If I were to tell you yeah. to like play something new and unique, like using Alex's argument from way earlier of like Street Fighter Six being like a niche thing that is approachable, like I didn't care fuck one about mech games and like Armor Core Six, 
Uh, I'm not going to say I'm going to go out and buy mech games, but like I, I loved it. And it was like, if I could make my perfect mech game, that was it. So, okay. Get yeah. rid of Resident Evil 4. Uh, Chris is the Harbinger of Death, the Herald of Darkness, or whatever. That <laughs> I killed two song. of my darlings. You bastard. Yeah, it is what it is. It happens. I had to kill all, all right. of mine. Give me just a second to transcribe uh, the final no problem. 10 games into and we my have, notepads. We have determined that the first two round buys are Baldur's Gate and Alan Wake 2. Alan Wake, Wake, and Alan Wake 2. Yeah. Okay, very good. Very interesting. I'll let right. Alex. Uh, are we ready to list. reveal the final 10 games? Go for it, bud. Here we go. All at right. Number one, Baldur's Gate 3. Number two, Alan Wake 2. At number in no three, particular we have order. The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Right. In no particular order. I was just getting them in there as they were discussed. Uh, number four, Spider Man 2. Number five, Final Fantasy 16. Number six, Street Fighter 6. Number seven, Armored Core 6. Number eight, Diablo 4. Number nine, Lies of P. And number 10, Sea of Stars. With an mm. S that I forgot. There it is. Now that's the now. sequel to Sea of Star, which is the more horror based. <laughs> <laughs> like first entry in the series very good look at that list that is an amazing list. list again thanks uh cozy for running this it's been pretty all gameplay it was amazing thanks for all of you guys alec bob co uh chris waterman george and the normal rafter thank you guys for coming on and deliberating this we will continue this with me chad and alex will determine we'll go through a bracket based on your guys's argument and our feelings on the game we will determine what respawn name fires official game of the year is maybe there's actually an extra twist i haven't told anybody about on how we're going to do that oh it, screen. <laughs> it does not deserve to be here but again thank you guys again check all their stuff out they said at the beginning of the episode this is our final 10 we will determine what responding fires game of the year is um and just thank you guys again is there anything else that needs to be said before i finish i don't this don't envy you guys like i think it's no, gonna get real hard after the first round <laughs> like so good said. luck yeah Thanks for yeah, having me. I just gotta say, I gotta say real quick, like I forgive you, Cozy. I understand you've had a really long, rough day today, and you're not thinking straight, and that uh, you didn't mean what you said about Garl. And so I forgive you, and I know that you're 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 not gonna take it back right now because you need some sleep. But it, it, it's funny I you say you. that because in fact, uh, doing this podcast has actually energized me and given me a clarity of mind and focus that I actually did not have before. I, I feel like everything that I've said over the course of the past hour has been top notch and 100% true. That's how most people feel when they stay up past the Ambien and they're really making really awful, terrible mistakes. Yeah. I mean, girl sucks. It's fine. All right. Thank you everyone for <laughs> tuning in. We will continue this later, but again, thank you guys for coming on and that is uh that's it. We've got a top 10. We'll talk about our pody goaties. There next time. All right. And with that, goodbye. <laughs>